the black community, helping people of the black community get into the tech space. So over the years, from my own experience personally, and many of my team members, you know, we've gotten to, we've had the opportunity to work with, you know, so many organizations across the globe, right, both remotely and on site. And what I discovered, especially um, on the global front, what I discovered was that it's either I'm the only black person in the room, or we are just about a handful within a very large organization. And that only means that black people of the black community, Africans, are doing some other things rather than getting into the tech space. And the belief is that, oh, it's very difficult to learn tech. Um, the uh, you know, there are no resource, there are no resources out there. You can't really be consistent on a particular program. And that is exactly why we exist at Analytics. All right. So what we do is to lower that entry barrier into tech for people of the black community and Africans at large. And the programs that we offer cut across data analytics, data science, data engineering, HR analytics, financial analytics. Um, you also have so, so, so many other uh, programs that we offer here at Analytics. If you have joined our session, some of our previous session, you would you know, you would um, be familiar with some of these programs, all right? And we have facilitators like myself, like Adesa, who would also be um, telling us one or two things later today, all right? We have facilitators from the best of the best organizations across the globe. Myself, I've worked for Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo is um, one of Italy's largest luxury car brand. Um, and I worked for their, you know, their branch in the US specifically for their supply chain team. So they used to be a sister organization alongside Ferrari up until 2016, when Ferrari became a standalone organization um, themselves, all right? So I worked with this particular organization and I was able to use the same skills that I'm going to be working you through today, all right, to help them solve real life problems, all right? Now, you, you would have someone like myself you know, people from, you have facilitators from McKinsey, facilitators from Coca-Cola, facilitators from Apple, Amazon, walk you through how they use these tools on their day-to-day -day role as a data analyst, all right, as a financial analyst, as a HR analyst and the likes, all right? They'll teach you this and from, from their experience, you would learn. So you are going to be undergoing what we call experiential learning, not... The, um, theory you learn by doing and not just doing you do it the way the best professionals in the space are doing it all right so um if you've not met adesa before adesa is the founder of Tenalytics. he's a data analytics expert with over a decade of um, experience in the industry all right and he has trained close on ten thousand participants and he has he has worked cutting across several sectors as well, including sports. He has worked with the autom automotive sector. He has worked with the oil and gas and so many other sectors, um, just to name a few, all right? And we also have a fantastic co-founder, the person of Efemena Ipro. Efemena Ipro is the co-founder of Tenalytics. And he's worked, his work, Efemena is a fantastic guy, all right? So he's worked, think of any role within the data space. Femina has worked in that particular role. He has won all the hats you can mention, all right, in the data space. He has worked as a data analyst. He's worked as a data scientist. He's worked as a data engineer. And he's been able to garner so much experience, also close on a decade. And he would also be impacting this experience on you, all right, at analytics. So he's trained and mentored quite a number of people, helping them get jobs um, across the globe as well, all right? And today, for, for today's session, for today's session in particular, you'll be having two fantastic, two fantastic facilitators, myself, Mohamed Suleiman, um, a data analyst with over half a decade of experience in the industry. And my wealth of experience has allowed me to solve so many problems, you know, for so many clients and organizations, all right? And I've been able to help 2,000 participants get into the tech space and a very good number of them to get um, 
you know, jobs across the globe, all right? Like I mentioned earlier, I've worked with Alfa Romeo. I've also had the opportunity to work in an FMCG, um, the FMCG, you know, sector, and so many other sectors, to name a few. And we also have um, Adeza on board. Um, Adeza, do you want to say hello? Um, continue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. Super excited to be here today once more um, to have this amazing session with you guys. Mohammed will walk you through an amazing project using Excel. All right, and I'll come back to show you exactly why Tenalytics is the best place for you to get your data analytics journey started. I've had close to a decade years of experience um, working in the tech ecosystem as a data analyst, as a data scientist. Um, I started out as a management consultant, but then I pivoted into data analytics. Um, I'm the founder of Tenalytics. I've worked across five different sectors, just like Mohammed also mentioned, from energy, oil and gas, to financial services, and automobile sports, and so on and so forth. And over the last four years, at Tenalytics, we've been able to help over 2,000 people, people that look like me, Africans and people of the Black community, to transition and get jobs in the first, in the tech ecosystem. Somebody's asking, are you brothers? That's amazing. <clears throat> I'll tell you how, um, if there's any relationship between myself and Mohammed, for those that stay till the end. Okay, so when we say get into tech, they say there's this popular say that charity begins at home. All right. So I'll tell you the exact relationship between myself and Mohammed for those of you that stay to the end of the session. So Mohammed, over to you. Thanks, Steve. So you've heard from the horses, right? Now, there's something that Deza mentioned that I always forget to tell people about myself. About myself. I also transitioned from mechanical engineering. I had a mechanical engineering background. So I was able to transition into tech just the same way you are seeking to make that switch as well. So like Adesa said, you want to know exactly um, what relationship exists between myself and himself, stay and stick to the end of this session and you would you'd have gained quite um, a lot, all right? Now, we are, we are making progress, okay? We are making progress, we are getting into it. Now, what exactly are we doing today? What exactly are we doing today? So what we'll be doing today will cut across four areas. All right. So the first, the very first thing we'll do is I'll walk you through on how to create an interactive Excel, Excel dashboard that updates itself. All right. So we're going to be using Excel. I'll open my Excel, walk you through step by step how to do that. All right. And then we'll go into how you can get started as a data analyst. So you're looking to make that switch. All right. How? There is the how to you know get started. So I'll be communicating that to you as well. And then Adesa would also come to talk about the amazing analytics, um, data analytics program that is going to be starting on the 2nd of March, all right? And what is in stock for, for you for this particular month as well. And then we'll go on to you know some success stories and the special discounts that we have um, running. Okay, so we are about to go to the first thing that we have, which is building an Excel dashboard that updates itself. And we're going to be working on a real life case study. All right, so it's not just um, an, an ordinary case study. It's a real life case study. Work together on that and you'll see exactly how that plays out. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to take something home? Type a yes in the chat if you are. Type in, yes, I'm excited. I'm super excited myself to be sharing this with you today. So are you ready for what's coming? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, fantastic. All right. Okay, great. And you, you would see my colleague. My colleague is also in the chat um, posting the attendance link for today's session. So please, if you want to get access to the recording of this session and all the materials that myself and Adesa will be using, all right, please fill in the um, fill in the form, the attendance form. Ensure you fill in the form so that your details will be taken note of and you'll be sent the recording um, after today's session. All 
all right? Okay, so the attendance form is not. So I'm sure my colleagues will be on that to um to rectify that, all right, Bonnie. Okay, so um let's get started. Now, what we are going to be doing today, all right, is look at yourself as a data analyst who is working for um, an FMCG. And what has happened over the past year is that revenue has revenue has taken a hit, all right, and it's reducing. And one of the major reasons revenue has reduced in this particular organization is because so many goods that have already been sold are being returned. So you have you have um, you know um, part of their part of their um, their revenue going back to the customers. Okay, something that the organization would have recorded as revenue is going back to the customer. Okay, and that's the organization losing on revenue. So you as a data analyst, all right, you would be in charge of tracking returns in this particular organization. And what you'll be building is an interactive dashboard that updates itself. So as the returns are coming in, and records are being taken, you want your dashboard to capture the latest information alongside, right? So and that's exactly what we are going to be building today. So we'll be building um, something that look like, looks like what's on my screen currently, all right? And um, we're going to update it, okay? I'll show you how to um, update it right from scratch, all right? And um, I've also kept the link to the data set I will be using for today's session in this particular slide. So you see it's important that you fill in the, the attendance form so that you can gain access to this, all right? So, okay, so my team member has said you should retry. So for those of us who have not been able to fill in the form, please try now as I speak so that you gain access to the recordings and the um, this particular slide that you can see on your screen, okay? So, Okay, just fill the form, fantastic, um, Pius. All right, so uh, my advice to you for this particular session would be this, all right? So let's work together. We would all use my screen, we'll work together, all right? But even in case you still want to follow me, all right? I'll put in, we have two links, okay? So we have one here and we have one here. You can see update the data source using this data. So I've kept the original data here and then you have, um, you know, a secondary data that would use to update, you know, this particular one once we start. Or we'll start with this. So um, I'll just pick up the, I'll pick up the, um, the link to the data set and put it in the chat, right? I'll put it in the chat for you so you can have a copy of it. All right, but all this will still be shared with you. Um, all this will still be shared with you, all right? So let's ensure that we stick till the end, like I have said. So what, what I'll do is this, okay? Let me open the data sets. I'll open up the data sets, all right? I'll open up the data sets for you. So this is the data sets, the one we'll be using. We'll be working with this, and then we'll would come back to use this second one to update. So we'll pick up data from the second one to update. So what we are doing is, okay, let me open it and show you all right let me open it and show you so you see exactly what the content is so this is what we are going to be building today but just hang on the data itself would show now okay fantastic now can you can we all see my screen can we all see my screen can we see my screen type a yes in the chat if you can ah, fantastic absolutely fantastic great now, okay, let me make it a bit bold so that you'll be able to see it even clear, more clearly. Okay, great. Now, you have um, about, I think about um, 12 columns in the data sets, all right? The first column is the driver ID. So like I mentioned, this particular organization takes note of all the returns that happen, okay, day after day. And the driver involved is taking note of all right, and then the driver ID, which is the unique identifier of the driver, okay? Um, you also have the corresponding driver name, so the name of the driver that was involved in that particular return. And then you have 
company ID and company name. Now, let me let me let me paint the scenario for you even better. Now, company ID and company name. Um, these are the company IDs and the corresponding company names of the logistics partner of this particular organization. So take, for example, we are working for Nest, Nestle, all right? You're working for Nestle, the makers of Milo. So that's that's an, that's one of the organizations I've also had the opportunity to work with. And I worked with their supply chain as well, okay? So I'm familiar, I'm very familiar with the supply chain um, sector, even if I don't have any background in supply chain. And that's one of the things data, um, the tech ecosystem will do for you, all right, when you get into it. So what they do is this. Now, you have vehicles that deliver products to the customers, all right? You have vehicles delivering products to the customers. And these vehicles are not owned by the parent organization itself. Rather, they are vehicles owned by logistics partners, logistics partners. So they could be individuals or group of individuals who own this particular vehicle. Um, and then, you know, the, the vehicles make the delivery of these products from the organization, from the warehouse down to where the customer is. So after the de deliveries are made, returns may happen for so many reasons. And you'd see that um, once I go on, okay? So you have, um, Able to download the data. All right. Okay. So even if you are, you are unable to download the data, no issues. All right. Let's work together because you'll be able to you'll be able to you know um repeat whatever I'm doing today on your own when you get the when you get the recording. All right. And you would have gained a lot as well. So now let's go ahead. You see return dates. So return dates. Return date is um, not in a format that we can read currently. I will take care of that. And then we have return complaint as well. Return complaint is the reason the customer um, you know, made that, that particular return. Okay, the reason the customer made that particular return. So you can see missing in transit, um, dented, dented, accident, torn seal, wrong item, and so many more, all right? So many more. And then you have the product ID, which is the unique identifier for the products. They have the corresponding product name, all right? They have the quantity. So how many units of products were returned in that particular in that particular return, return, all right? So all these things have been taken note of. The unit price, the amount, as well as the risk category. So based on some condition, some kind of returns are categorized as low risk, while others are categorized as high risk, all right? So what we'll be doing now is I'll close this data. I'll close this data set, all right? I'll close this data set and open a fresh new Excel that would work with, all right? I'll open a fresh new Excel that we need to work with. All right, so um, I'll close this, okay? Minimize this as well. And then I'll open Excel. So I'll open up Excel. I'll open up Excel. Okay, somebody's asking for the link to the data set. I'll put it in the chat. All right, so open up Excel, okay? Open up Excel, open up Excel. So I'll go on to open up Excel. Open up Excel, if you want to work with me, all right, open up Excel. And if not, that's very, that's very fine as well. Okay, so we'll work together and then you'll be able to replicate everything I'm doing, everything I'll be doing today on your own. So open up Excel, okay? Now, once you open up Excel, what you want to do is you see, can we all see file home in start page layout? Can we see that on the top part of my screen? Can you see file home 
insert page layout, formulas, and so on and so forth. Can you see that? Fantastic. So what I'll click on is data. I'll click on data. I'll click on data. All right. I'll click on data. I'll click on data. Now, after I've clicked on data, you'd see something very interesting that so many people don't talk about um, in Excel. Okay. So somebody's saying they cannot hear me. So um, so you can you can rejoin. Okay, you can leave the call briefly, rejoin, and then you should be able to hear me afterwards. All right. So once you um click on data, like I like I mentioned, you'll see something very interesting. On the left hand side, on the left hand side, where you, where you see my mouse, you have get data, get data, and this particular icon is used to connect to so many data sources. All right, so many data sources. All right, so we we'll connect to that particular Excel file that I showed us earlier. So if you downloaded it, it's in your downloads. So we we'll look for it there and we we'll connect to it. So I'll click on get data. Once I click on get data, you see so many options, okay? And I want to hover my mouse on from file, from file. And when I hover my mouse on from file, I have these options. I have from Excel Workbook, from text or CSV, from XML, from JSON, from PDF, from folder, and so on and so forth. So what, what, I, what I want to click on is Excel Workbook. Now, the very first thing I clicked on was data. When I opened my Excel file, this particular Excel, a new Excel Workbook, I, the first thing I clicked on was data. And then that gave me the option to click on get data on the left here and hover my mouse on from file. And then I clicked on Excel workbook, Excel workbook from Excel workbook. So I'll click on that and you see something happens. So my, um, my folder opens and where I want to actually go to is I'll go to desktop, then I created a folder called masterclass. And inside of it, I have a folder called data sets. All right. I have a folder called data sets. And that's where I kept my own data. So yours would likely be in your downloads. So just navigate to downloads. You see downloads here. Click on it. You'll see the data. Supply chain returns 190124. So I would work with this one. And later on, I would come back to open up this second one and use the data in it to update the first one. I'll add it to the first one and you so that you can see how the dashboard updates. So I'll click on this particular data set. I'll click on the first one and click on imports, 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 imports. So I'll click on imports. I'll click on imports, all right? I'll click on imports and you just sit back and something happens. Okay, can we all see what I have on my screen? Can, can you see what I have on my screen, guys? Just type a yes in the chat. Fantastic one. So what we are about to experience is something so many people don't talk about in Excel, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm about to show you exactly how powerful Excel, what you can, you know, Excel can be and what you can use Excel to do. So you would see that it says, um, it says navigator, okay, select multiple items and you have an item underneath you have sheet one. So in that particular Excel file, I had data in sheet one. So I'll click on sheet one. I'll click on sheet one and I'll see a preview of my data. Can we all see that it's the same data I showed you? The driver ID, the driver name, company ID, company name. If I scroll to the right, you see I have return dates, return complaints, and so on and so forth. Can we see that? Can we see this? Great. So this is because we have connected to that particular data set. I want to bring it in here to process it. And speaking about processing, right? For example, if you take a look at, if you take a look at this return date column, 
like you saw earlier, it's not in a format that you can really analyze. So we want to put it in actual date format so that that way we can make use of it. All right. Now, <clears throat> what to do that, to do all these um, adjustments um, here and there, and you know, um, transformation, you call it transformation, the data space in data terms, you call it transformation, right? So in order for us to do this transformation, okay, we would click on transform data at the bottom right here, where you can see my mouse, transform data, transform data. So OG is in the chat saying ETL, fantastic, fantastic. So. You you have you you must have been in one of our sessions in the past, OG. The case if you've been in one of our sessions in the past. All right. So ETL simply means extract, transform, and load. So what we did initially was to extract the, the data from the source. And what we are going into now is what we call transformation. Okay, transformation. So somebody's saying this is similar to Power BI. Exactly. So Power BI, if you've ever seen Power BI. Power BI was built on the same engine as Excel. So look at Power BI as, an, as a bigger brother to Excel, okay? So, but there's so much that you can use Excel to do, and that's why we are here today. All right, so I'll click on Transform Data. So once I click on Transform Data, something opens up. For those of you who are very familiar with Power BI, all right, you would have seen what is about to pop up on my screen now, okay? So just give it a second. Now, what you have on my screen now, okay, give it a second to load. Fantastic. What you have on my screen now is what we call Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor, exactly. So how many of you have seen Power Query Editor before? You've seen Power Query Editor before, just type a yes in the chat. And if you've not seen Power Query Editor before, say, just type a no in the chat. So I want to know, okay, you've not seen Power Query Editor before, fantastic. No, no, no. And I'm sure if I ask whether you've seen Excel before, whether you've used Excel before, the answer is likely going to be yes, all right? Okay, you've not seen Power Query Editor before. Okay, yes, from Power BI. Okay, great. So if, you are, if you've seen it before from Power BI, now this is Power Query Editor, the same Power Query Editor, all right, but now in Excel, all right, in Excel. Now, let's, let's see, and why, why was the point of bringing it to Power Query Editor? Just like I mentioned earlier, for columns like the return date, for example, you want to ensure that it's in the right format before you go ahead to work on it, before you use it for your analysis. So I would need to change the format from um, what it is currently to a date format. How do I do that? If you look at the column headers, on the left-hand side of each column header, on the left-hand side of each column header, you'd notice something like ABC. Can you see ABC here? For driver ID, you can see ABC. For driver name, you can see ABC. For, for cost for company ID, you can see ABC. What ABC means is that the data you have in that column is a text data, okay? It's a text data type, all right? Then for return dates, for return dates, all right? For return dates, you can see it's in number formats, okay? You can see one, two, three, indicating that it is in number formats, but we don't want it to be in number formats. We want it to be in a date format. So I'll simply click on the one, two, three, all right? And you see all the other formats I can convert my data into. And what I want to click on is dates, dates, dates. I'll click on dates. Can we all see that? You click on one, two, three to pop out the data types for you to select, and you'd click on dates. Can we see that? Can we see that? Can you see that, guys? Are we together? Okay, fantastic, great. So I'll go ahead and click on dates. Great. I'll go ahead and click on 
data, something pops up, all right? Something pops up. So whenever you, as a data professional, as a tech professional, you need to build some, you know, some habits when you are um, trying to break into the space. So you click on something and you, you know, something pops up, do well to read through it, all right? It says the selected column has an existing type conversion, all right? Would you like to replace the existing conversion or present? Preserve the existing conversion and add a new conversion as a separate step. Okay, so I can replace current, replace the current step, or add a new step. So I'll just go for replace current, and that changes it to my date data type. Now the reason it's saying um, it's saying there is a type detected before is because Power Query automatically helps you to detect your data type upon extraction. Okay, upon extraction. Um, so you are you what you've done now is you've converted it to, into a more readable um you know data data type. And once we've done this, okay, all others are good to go, right? All others are good to go, as you can see. Um, what we'll do next is on the top left corner here, on the top left corner here, can we see what I have here? On the top left corner. You see close and load, close and load, close and load. And all you need to do is you click on the drop down and click on close and load, close and load. Or you can click on the icon directly, right? You can click on the icon on top of close and load. And you just take a step back and wait for Power Query Editor to do its final job. And that loads it into the, um, that loads it into the, um, it loads it into Excel, right? It loads it into Excel. Can we all see? Can we all see this? We have it loaded into Excel, all right? You have it loaded into Excel. What about the amount column? So the amount column is in number format, all right? So it's in number format already. So we don't need to um, do anything on that. Um, Don, thanks so much, please. How about the data? All right, so I'll just put in the um, link to download the data set one more time in the chat. All right, so after having done this, okay, after having done this, all I need to do is I'll close queries and connection. I'll close this, okay? I'll close that. I already have my data set in Excel, okay? And one thing you would notice is that from there, it automatically loads it as, as um, a table, an Excel table, okay? If you don't know what an Excel table is, okay? Excel table comes with so many functionalities. It comes with um, integrated filters, structured referencing. I know you, you might not understand some of the things I'm mentioning now, Okay, but these are things that you'd get to learn in a proper Excel class. But for the sake of this class, all right, all you need to do is once you've loaded it this way, all right, you notice on the top, at the top part of your Excel, you see, you see table design, table design. So table design allows you to change the color of the table to whatever color suits you, all right? You can change the color of the table to any color that suits you. And you can, on the left-hand side here, where you can see my mouse, you would see table name, table name. So it's very ideal for you to rename your table. So I'll rename it to data, data. I'll rename it to data. I'll rename it to data, all right? So I'll type in data there and hit enter. So my data set has a name called data called data. So somebody's asking, I can see you didn't open Power BI to get to Power Query Editor. That's the whole idea of this particular session, right? So Power Query Editor, is also exists within Excel, can also leverage Power Query Editor in Excel. And that's what I've been able to show you guys. All right, are we together? Are we together? Type, type a one if you are with me. Are you following? And I believe, we've not started the dashboard yet, but I believe you've learned something so far. Right now, what you want to do next is would open up a new sheet. All right, would open up a new sheet in that same Excel 
in that same Excel, um, Excel will open up a new sheet. You can use the plus sign to do that. Okay, and I'll call these sheets. Um, I'll just call the sheets workings. Okay, workings. I'll call the sheets workings. And what I want to do build here is the engine room behind my dashboard. Okay, the engine room behind my dashboard. Now, and they are called pivot tables. Pivot tables. Now, pivot tables exist in Excel, and that's what we would use to answer, you know, any question we want to answer, you know, across the data. All right, across the data. So yes, you'll be able to leverage um, Power Query Editor, you know, um, regardless of the Excel that you have. Okay. Um, what did you transform in the Power Query Editor? So I, I transformed the um, date column to a date data type. It was ex existing as a number, um, it was ex existing as a number data type, all right, um, prior to my transformation. So what I'll do here is I'll insert, let's insert a pivot table, all right? Let's go ahead and insert a pivot table. So in cell A1, okay, I'll click on insert, click on insert, and you see pivot table, pivot table. Click on insert, you see pivot table, click on the icon, and it asks you, what do you want to, what's the name of the table or range you want to insert the pivot table from, all right? Remember I gave my name, can we all remember the name I gave my data set? Can you remember the name I gave my table? Do we remember? I, I renamed my table, do you remember the name? Fantastic, you guys are following. So I'll type in that exact name, data. Type in that exact name, data, and then you click on OK. You click on OK. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. I'll go ahead and click on OK. All right, go ahead and click on OK. And then something appears on the right-hand side here. Okay, and what you have here are the columns in your data set, all the fields. In your data set. So they are called fields, okay, representing the columns in your data sets. All right. And you can drag and drop them in this area, in any area of your choice, depending on what result you want to have. Now let's start. So the first thing we want to do is let's even know how many returns happen. We want to know how many returns happened in the data set. All right, so to do that is very simple, okay? To do that is very simple. All you need to do, all you need to do is, let's count how many, um, you know, let's just count how many driver IDs we even have in the data set. You know, every return carries a driver ID, right? Are we together, guys? Every return carries a driver ID. So there should be a driver attached to each return that happened. Do you agree? Fantastic. Now, if I can count how many driver IDs I have in, in the data set, that would allow me to know how many returns happened. Okay, and to do that, I would drag driver ID. I will hold driver ID, drag it and drop it in values. So I'll hold drag and drop it in values. Okay, now once I drop it in values, you see 400, 400. So it means we have 400 returns in the data set. We had 400 returns in the data set. We had 400 returns in the data set. All right, are we together? Are we together, guys? Are we together? Just indicate yes in the chat. Okay, great. Now. And that's how we, we answer all other questions. Drag and drop, drag and drop. You create a pivot table, you drag and drop, drag and drop. And that's what we'll be doing, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the total amount. So remember we had a column in the data set, in the data set that says quantity, okay? Telling us the um, how many units of each product were returned, you know, in that particular return. So we can sum up this column would know the um would know the quantity the total quantity of products that were returned across the data set. So going back to the sheet where we were, 
um, I would drag quantity from my fields and drop it under driver count of driver ID here. I'll drop it under here. So I'll drag quantity and drop it under here. And I have 10,442. So it means that there were there was 10,442. There were 10,442 um, products returned. Okay. 10,442 products returned. Now, I also want to see the total amounts, all right? Total amounts. And the trick is very simple. All I need to do is to drag amounts, to hold amounts, and drag it to values. That's, I'll put it under some quantity and drop it there, okay? And you can see I have my total amount. I have my total amount. Are we good to go? Total amount. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Okay, fantastic. Great. So what I'll go on to do now is I would answer two or three more questions. Two or three more questions. Okay. I would answer two or three more questions using the um using pivot tables. Okay. And then we'll start to create our chart and dashboard. Now I'll get again to insert a pivot table. I'll go to an empty cell, right? I'll go to an empty cell. Okay. I'll go to an empty cell. Click on insert. Click on pivot table. And again, I would enter the name I gave my data. And that's data, all right? I give, the name I give to my table is data. So I'll, I'll type it in there, click OK. And my fields appear again. And this time, I want to see company name, OK? So I'll drag that and drop it in rows. So I see it in different rows. You can see the, um, and these are, like I explained earlier, the logistics partner of this particular organization. Um, you can see Fly, Galcos, Jacketman, Jolt, Nancy the Great, and so on. So all these are logistics partners that own the vehicles. Okay. And what I want to see is the total quantity returned by each of these um, in the name of this um, logistics partner. So I'll go to quantity, drag and drop in values. And what you notice is that you now see some of you now see quantity, okay, or the quantity broken down by the um, logistics partner involved. Okay, and you can see that the number here tallies with the total here, 10,442. But it's broken down into all of these different um, logistics partner. Are we good? Are we good? So let's make a chart out of this now, right? Let's make a chart out of this information. Let's make a chart out of this information. To do that, I simply, I simply click on the, I simply click on the um, pivot table. These are pivot tables, all right? So I click on the pivot table that I want to create a chart from, all right? You can click on insert, and then you will see pivot charts, pivot charts. And all you need to do is to click on pivot charts, click on the icon, and you would have, um, you'd have a suggestion. You have a suggestion, okay? This is, a column chart being suggested here. And you know, it works for me. So what I'll do is I'll simply click on okay. I'll click on okay. And then I have the column charts. I have the column charts. All right. But what I want to do is I want these columns. Can you see that clearly? Gal cost. I don't know if you can see my screen, guys. If you can see it clearly, Gal cost has the highest or the tallest um Gal cost has the tallest column. All right. So I want it to, I want the columns to be arranged. Okay. I want it to be arranged from the tallest one to the smallest so, so that I can tell a story. All right. I can tell a story about each of the logistics partner. Very simple. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, if you are not, if you are not getting something, all you need to do at this point is two things. You fill in the attendance form, then you pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay. Fill in the, att the attendance form, pay attention to what I'm doing, and I can bet you, you'll be able to recreate it. Even if it's the first time you're opening Excel, you'll be able to recreate what I'm doing. All right? So um, all I need to do to rearrange this is I would right-click on any of the values. Right-click on any of the values in this pivot table. I right-click on any of the values, and you'd see sort, sort, sort. I hover my mouse on sort and click on 
sort largest to smallest. And it arrange it arranges the bars, the columns for me from the highest to the lowest. All right. So what I'll do next is what I'll do next is I want to remove all these buttons. I'll remove these buttons and this total here. I don't need that. The total on the right here and these buttons, I'll remove them. How do I do that? Okay. How do I do that? All I need to do is I'll right click on where I have sum of quantity, right click on it and click on hide all, hide all field. I hide all field buttons on charts. Hide all field buttons on charts. So I'll click on hide all field buttons on charts and all those buttons goes away. Guys, like I mentioned, okay? Rather than trying to catch me up, all you need to do is two things. I'm mentioning it again because it's very important. Fill in the form, the attendance form that is in the chat, and then concentrate on what I'm doing. You know, you'll be able to recreate it once you get the recording of this session. All right, you'll be able to recreate it on your own. So I've been able to remove the buttons now. And all I need to do is to remove this total that I have here. So I'll click on it and hit delete on my keyboard. The delete key on your keyboard, on the top right corner of your keyboard, delete, all right? Delete, and then you have more space for your dashboard. You have more space for your dashboard. I mean, for your charts, rather. I beg your pardon, for your charts, all right? So what I'll do now is I'll create two more charts, okay? I'll create two more, two more charts, and then we'll start to develop our dashboard in no time. Now, okay, Rama 2, fill in the, the attendance form and you would get the um, recording for today's session, right? So I'll click on a fresh, um, a fresh cell underneath the pivot table I created initially. Click on insert and click on pivot table again. You see, I'm repeating myself over and over again, right? Again, I'll type in the name of the table, which is data, we gave the name, we gave we gave the table a name. I click on data, and then click on, okay. I click on okay, All right? I click on okay. Now again, I have my fields, and that allows me to answer another specific question. And what I want to answer is, I want to see how many complaints types. Okay, how many times did each complaint type happen or occur within the data set? So I'll look at return complaints. I'll drag it to rows, drag return complaint to rows, and you can see them in different rows, accident, dented, missing in transit, turn seal, and wrong um, item, wrong item, all right? So I want to count how many times each of these occurred. So how many returns are, are accident? How many returns are dented? How many returns are missing in transit and so on and so forth. And to do that is very easy. I simply drag return complaint again from that from the fields to values, okay? From the fields to values. And you'd see on the side here, it is being um, calculated for me, all right? So you can see that, oh, accident happened eight times. Dented happens 226 times. Uh, missing in transit happened 110 times, turn seal 34, wrong item 22. And you can see everything tallies with the total number of returns that happened in the data set, 400, like we determined before, right? So what I would do now is I would, um, I would create, I would create, um, you know, I would create a chart to visualize this, right? I'll create a chart to visualize this, all right? I'll create a chart to visualize this, and then you see exactly how it looks like. So it's, it's, it's easily, it's easily um, you can easily read it out, okay? So I'll simply click on this particular um, pivot table, click on insert, and click on pivot chart, just like I did earlier. And then you can use column chart if you want. Um, you can use bar charts, okay? And you can also use um, a pie or donut chart. So I'll click on pie and click on donuts.
Okay, I'll click on pie, click on donuts so that I see the percentage of each category. <clears throat> All right, we'll still format this um, so that we can, we can, um, we'll, we'll be able to see it more clearly. So I'll click on okay. And there I have my, I have my um, donut charts. I have my donut charts. So just like I did earlier, I'll right click on this button and click on hide off value field buttons. And then um, I want my donut chart to be a, a bit thicker than this. And I want the labels to show. I want the labels to show on the chart rather than as a legend this way, okay? So all I need to do is I right click on the, right click on this, on a slice. I right clicked on a slice of the donuts, okay? I right clicked on a slice of the donuts and click on format data series, format data series. And then I'll reduce the whole size. I'll reduce the whole size. I'll reduce, the whole size, all right? The whole size to, um, I'll reduce the whole size so that, you know, it's, it makes my donuts a, a bit fatter, all right? And then what I need to do is, I would add um, data labels to this. I would add data labels to this. How do I do that? How do I do that? You'll see the plus sign here, the plus sign on the chart. Click on the plus sign and check the box for, data label, right? You check the box for data label, okay? Um, you check the box for data label and you'd see that some data labels appear, but it's not clear, all right? It's not clear. So what I want to do is I'll click on the drop down beside data label here, okay? And I click on more options, okay? More options, okay? More options, all right? More options. Okay, and then you see that all the data labels have been highlighted. So I can then right click on any one of them, right click on any one of them and click on format data label, format data label, format data label. And now I can decide what, what I want to show, what I want to appear on my data label. So I want the, I don't want the absolute values. So I will check values. What I want is, I want the, um, I want the category name as well as, I want the category name as well as the, um, you know, I want the category name as well as the, the percentage. Okay. So again, I right click on the data label, click on format data label, and I check the box for category name. Okay. Check the box for category name and uncheck the box for, for values and check the box for percentage, percentage. And what you notice, I'll drag each of them out now. Okay, I drag this out. Okay, I drag this out so that you can see them more clearly. All right, I'll drag this out. This is accident. This is wrong item, so I'll put wrong item here. All right, this is torn seal, so I'll drag this out. This is missing in transit. I'll drag this out so you can see what I have in there. All right, you can see what I have in there. All right, and you can see the lines, the belly needs. All right, so all I need to do now is, I'll, since I have the data labels, I'll take out this, this particular legend. So I'll click on it. I'll click on the legend and delete. Delete on my keyboard. Delete on my keyboard. And then I have this, okay? And then I have, this. So what I want to do now is I'll create one more chart, just one more chart, and then we'll start to build our dashboard together. Now, um, I'll click on this particular cell, this empty cell here, okay, and insert a pivot table again. And you can see I insert a pivot table for each question. So I'll click on this, click on insert, click on pivot table, okay, enter the name of my table, and click on OK, right? I click on Okay, and that inserts a pivot table for me. So what I want to see here now is, let's see the driver that has, let's see how many times did the driver um, return, return, um, you know, return, return products. How many times did the driver return products? 
All I need to do is I'll drag driver to rules and I can see the list of drivers that I have. Blake Jr., Dennis Carter, Greg Taylor and the likes. Okay. And to know how many times they, are, they, are, they, they returned something, right? I would, I would need to count how many times their names appear in the data set. And then what, all I need to do is drag driver name from fields again to values. And that shows me the breakdown of how many returns happened per driver. And you can see clearly that KC Dre has the highest, 230 returns to KC Dre. So straight away, you know that. What would you do if you are the owner of this organization? Tell me, type in the chat what you do. So you take record of returns. Some particular driver drivers are involved in the returns. And one of them has an outrageously high number like this. What would you do as the owner of the organization? Type it in the chat. I want to know. What would you do? What would you do, what would you do to someone like Casey Dre? Well, what would you do? Type it in the chat. Let me see. I'm going to sack him. Okay, query first. Sack, then fire. Okay, query. All right. So keep keep the responses coming. Okay, I want to know what you do to Casey Dre. But meanwhile, I'll go ahead and create a chart so that we can see it more clearly. So I'll click on the um, pivot table, just as I've been doing again. I'll click on insert, click on pivot charts, and then you see the default pivot charts that is suggested. So what I'll do is, I've used a column chart before. So I want to use a bar chart. I'll use a bar chart, all right? I'll use a bar chart so it appears like this. And then I click on, okay. Now, I want to see it from highest to lowest, all right? I want to see it from highest to lowest, okay? I want to see it from highest to lowest. So I can see your, your um, comments coming in. Someone said, I'll have a discussion to know why and give him the support he needs exactly so fantastic um you know um submissions guys so what i'll do now is i'll right click on the values again and again i'll hover my mouse on sort and this time i'll click smallest to largest smallest to largest and the chart arranges from highest to lowest right for bar charts okay for the bar charts so and then i begin to remove all these buttons again so I'll right click on them like I did before, hide all field, all field buttons or charts. Then I click on total here on the right and hit my delete key on my keyboard, all right? Hit my delete key on my keyboard. And then I have this, okay? I have this. Now I have three charts, three charts. So let's start. I have three charts and about three KPIs. So let's, let's make do with this. Let's build our dashboard with what we have here. So I'll create a new sheet. I'll create a new sheet and call it dashboard. Dashboard, right? Dashboard. I'll create a new sheet, call it dashboard. I'll close this format shape pane here, all right? So dashboard. Now, to build a dashboard, all right, you need to have, you know, um, you, you turn yourself into an artist where you make use of colors, you know, and the likes. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to choose a background for my um for my for my dashboard. So what I'll do is um I would highlight the entire sheet, control A, highlight the entire sheet, control A, highlight the entire sheet, control A, control A to highlight the entire sheet. And then I click on view on the top part of my screen here. I click on view and then I would uncheck grid lines. Uncheck grid lines. And you notice that all the lines disappears. And I have something that, that mimics what an artist would have, like a canvas, you know, the artists use in drawing. So I have something like that, all right? And then what I want to do next is Control A again, Control A, and this time I click on Home. And what I want to do is to add a color using this icon here, like a paint bucket, like a paint bucket, right? So I click on the drop down and I select a color. So I want to select a gray color, a gray color, something like, uh, let's select something like this. Let's see. Right. So I'll select something like this, okay? A gray color, all right? And then I start. So, but before I start, I want to give myself 
some space. I want to, I want to you know, um, ensure that my dashboard has as much, as much space as possible. So I'll come to the right hand here where I can see my, where you can see my mouse. On this icon, I click on this drop down. Not the drop down on the formula bar, but this drop down on the, um, on the, on the, on the ribbon. I'll click on the drop down and click on show tabs only. Show tabs only. So that gives me more space to work with my dashboard. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is let's add our shapes. Let's add our shapes to, to hold, you know, let's add our shapes. All right. Let's add our shapes to, to show, to hold or to demarcate where we put each chart. All right. So I have three charts. So I would, I would create, um, I would create three shapes, right? So um, what I'll do is this very simple. I'll click on insert, click on insert, and this time I want to click on illustration, illustration, illustration. So somebody's asking, what app am I using? We are using Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Excel, right? No Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel. So I click on illustration and click on shapes. I'll click on shapes and I'll select a rectangle. All right, you see my cursor turns into a plus sign. My, my cursor turns into a plus sign. All I need to do is to hold and drag it to draw the shape. Okay, hold and drag it to draw the shape and you'd see this. All right, you'd see, you'd see this. Okay, so I'll position this on the left-hand corner here and drag it down a bit, all right? Position that on the left-hand corner, drag it down a bit, okay? I'll drag it down a bit. So let's, um, I'll change the color of this to, to, to match the color of my background. So clicking on the shape, I click on shape formats, and then you see shape fill. And this is where you, you know, change the color of your, of your, um, of any elements they've clicked on. So I'll click on this particular um, color. Okay, black. And then for the shape outline, I'll come back to shape format or shape outline. I'll select no outline, no outline, right? So now that I've created this, yeah? All I need to do is to duplicate this. I'll duplicate this for every other thing I want to create. So I'll click on this shape, control D, control D. I have this shape now. All I need to do is just to reduce it. I'll reduce it to this particular part. Okay, I'll reduce it to this and place it somewhere here, all right? I'll place it somewhere here. I'll place it somewhere here, okay? And then I can give it an outline so that it pops out. So I'll click on shape format, click on shape outline and give it something bright, maybe like, maybe like white. Let me give it white, all right? And you see that, you know, it has a white outline now. So all I need to do is very simple. Yeah, I'll duplicate this also, duplicate. So I'll bring it down here, I'll duplicate again, and another one appears down here, all right? Another one appears down there. So I have something like this, right? I have something like this. So I want to now, you know, create shapes also here for my three dashboards. I mean, sorry, for my three um charts rather, okay? So I have one chart, another one, and then, um, you know, I'll have this one also. So what I'll do is, um, let's first create a shape. So I'll just duplicate, since I have this shape already, I don't need to create a new shape, an all new shape. I just come here, Control D to duplicate. I drag this, um, just resize it. Okay, I resize it to suit my dashboard. All right, so I have one here. And then um, I can duplicate again, Control D. All right, I put another one. I'm using Control D to duplicate. If you're wondering, click on the shape and click on Control D to duplicate. So I'll arrange this one like this. I'll put this one here, all right? Um, and then I duplicate this again, and then I put this here. I put this here. Guys, your comments, how is it looking? How is it looking so far? How is it looking? There is no data on it yet, but how is it looking? Nice. 
fantastic. And this is just me playing around its colors. All right. So let's let's quickly do something. So I'll put I'll put um I'll put a title here. Okay, I'll put a title here. All right. I'll put a title here. Okay, so that we can actually title our dashboard. Our dashboard needs a title. So what I need to do is click on insert. <clears throat> click on insert. All right. And to the right hand side of my screen, I'll see text. Okay, text. I'll click on text. Click on text and you see text box. Text box. So you draw the text box and then you'll be able to type in it. So I'll click on that. Click on text box. And then I come here and draw my text box. You can draw your text box. So I have my text box here. So and then I can go ahead and type my, somebody should give me a, a title for this particular dashboard. Somebody should give me a title, well, a descriptive title. Give me a title. So I'll just pick it up from the chat and put it in here. And I'll use that as a title. Somebody give me a title, give me a title or a dashboard, right? <clears throat> Somebody, I'm waiting, give me a title for the dashboard. Supply chain returns, okay? Who else, who else is helping me out? Right, so I'll just pick up Uluremi's um, title, okay? Um, Supply chain dashboard, supply chain returns. So I'll just pick up Oluremi's um, title and paste it here, okay? So that, I think I've not copied it. Let's see. And then come here, paste. All right, so I'll just type it in. For some reason, it's not pasting. So I'll say supply chain, supply chain, returns right supply chain returns um let me put dashboard okay supply chain return dashboard okay and thank you everyone that that, contrib that contributed now supply chain return dashboard what i need to do is i'll let me resize this okay i'll resize this um this text and then i position it very well and you know place it somewhere here so i click on um, I click on I click on shape format. Okay, click on shape format, shape fill, and put no fill, no fill, so that the background color of the of the um, text box disappears. And you'll notice you can't see anything. So I'm dragging it to here now, okay, so that you can see it. Right now, all I need to do is to click on shape format again, text fill. For text fill, I'll click on white. And you see that the text turns to white. The text turns to white. So all I need to do now is to increase the size. So I highlight the text, highlight the text, click on home, all right? And then I can use this icon to increase the size a bit. Um, I can make it bold, all right? Make it bold and you see how it looks like here. Okay, so I have something like this. Supply chain returns dashboard. And I just place it in the middle there. All right, I place it in the middle in there. So all I need to do is to finally take out this outline. You can see that I have an outline for the text box. So I don't want that outline, I want to take it out. So I'll click on the outline, click on shape format. And then where I have shape outline, I'll click on the drop down and click on no outline, no outline. And that takes out the outline for me. All right, and my dashboard is much more cleaner. My um, Title is much more cleaner. Okay, so after having done this, let's start bringing all we have in our in our working sheets to the dashboard. Let's bring all we have in our working sheets to the dashboard. Okay, so the first thing we we'll bring is you see all these cards, these cards, these three cards I put here. Can we see that? Can you see these three cards that I put here? These three cards I put here. My intention is to put in. Fantastic. So my intention is to put in these numbers, 400, to indicate, um, you know, total number of returns. And then I'll put, um, I'll put the total number of quantity, I mean, the quant sum of quantity, that's total quantity in the next one. And then I'll put um, total amount 
in the following one as well. How do I do that? How will I possibly achieve that? All right, I'll click on the dashboard, okay? Then click on this first shape, click on this first shape and click on the formula bar, the formula bar, click inside the formula bar. Again, I clicked on the first shape, click inside the formula bar, type the equal to, type equal to, type equal to, equal to, and then I click on the working sheets and click on 400. I click on 400, right? Click on 400. Once I do that, I hit enter. And you might not be able to see it. I'm not sure you, you'll be able to see the um, text now. You might not be able to see the text now, okay? But my text is in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. So how do we confirm that it's in there? The, the text is automatic, it's um by default black. Okay, it's by default black. That's why you can't see it. But 400 is somewhere in there. But let me let me change the text format. Okay, can you see it? You can see it on my screen. That's amazing. I'm struggling to see it. All right. I'm struggling to see it. So, but let's make it more legible. So I'll click on shape format, click on shape format, and click on text fill text field and click on white. Now, once I click on white, okay, I'll make it white. You'd see that, um, okay, not yet white. So let's repeat that again. Click on the shape, click on shape format, text field, and click on white color. Okay, and what, can you see? You have it white now. So can you see 400 in there now? Can we all see 400 in there now? Once I change the text to white, you can now see 400, fantastic. So all I need to do is I'll do in the same fashion. Um, okay, uh, what I'll do is let me place 400 somewhere here. Okay, in the middle at the, at the bottom and the center bottom. So I'll click on um I'll click on home, click on home. I can increase the font size a bit. You can see 400 getting bigger under there. Okay, you can see 400 getting bigger. All right, and then um I'll click on. The alignment okay in alignment I align it to center um I can align it to the bottom as well so it appears like this all right so 400 is there so later I can come and put in a title and say total number of returns all right so what I need to do next is now let me bring in the other two numbers quickly quickly so I'll click on dashboard click on this second shape again I go to my formula bar equal to equal to and then I click on workings, just the same way I did the first one. Click on workings, click on some, click on this 10,000, right? 10,442, hit enter. Okay, so we all know that it's somewhere in there. All right, but I'll leave it. I won't do anything to it. To it. I'll just leave it. I'll, I'll, I'll format it very easily and I'll show you how. Next one is this one, this shape. I'll click on this shape, click on the formula bar, equal to, Again, I click on the working sheet and click on the final digits that I have in there. Hit enter, hit enter, and then I have it in here. Now, all I have to do is to click on the first one. Click on the first one because I have formatted it already. Click on the first one, click on home, and you'll see a paintbrush here, a paintbrush. So I'll double click on the paintbrush and you'll see that there, can you all see that there's a paintbrush beside my mouse pointer now? Can you see that? Can we all see that? You can see a paint brush beside my mouse pointer. Great. Having my mouse pointer that way, I'll click on this one. I'll click on the second box and click on the third, third box. And it formats, it uses the first format for the subsequent ones. And I can hit escape once I'm done. Hit escape on your keyboard, on the top left of your keyboard. And you are good to go. Now, the next thing we'll do is the next thing it would do is let's bring in, we'll give it a title, okay, shortly. We'll give everything a title. But before we do that, let's bring in, um, you know, the next chart, this particular one. So I'll click on it here. I'll click on the chart here. I would cut it, Control X, okay, Control X to cut it. Then I come to the dashboard and then I want to put it here, Control V. I want to put it here, okay? So I'll close down this. I no longer need this. So I'll resize this to fit in the, I'll resize it to fit in the, um, the shape. Okay, so I have something like this, right? I have something like this. So all I need to do is 
to format this to suit the to suit that shape. All right. So I click on I click on the grid line to remove the grid line. Okay, the grid line, these horizontal lines. Click on one of them to highlight everything, then hit delete on your keyboard to take it out. All right. And then I want to make the the um I want to make the background of this particular chart transparent so that the shape I put behind becomes um the the shape itself. So I mean becomes the background of the chart itself. So I'll click on the chart, click on formats, formats, shape fill, and no fill, no fill, no fill. No right? No fee. Fantastic. And then I go ahead and click on, um, you can see text color here, right? For text field. So I click on the drop down, click on white. It changes everything to white for me. It changes everything to white, meaning it changes all the text to white. I'm not done yet. I'll click on one of the columns. Click on one of the columns. One of the columns in the, um, in the chart and click on format. I'll go to shape view and click on white. And that turns, you can see that that turns the um, columns to white for me. Okay. And you can see this now matches my dashboard, right? Can we all see that? It matches my dashboard now. It matches my dashboard. It matches my dashboard. Great. Now let's bring in this one. Let's bring in um, the drivers, the drivers um, charts. Okay. So um, I would click on this, Control X to cut, and then I come to my dashboard sheets. I bring it to this shape, Control V to paste. Okay, and all I need to do is to resize, is to resize, um, to resize the charts so that we can all see it clearly. Okay, can all see it clearly, all right? And again, just as I did for the first one, I'll just do the same thing I did for this. I'll do for this, click on formats, you know, the shape view, no view, the text view, I want it in white. So I'd already use white. So I just need to click on this here. Okay, I'll remove the grid lines, click on the grid lines, hit delete. Okay, then I'll click on the column, click on format, and I turn the shape view to white as well. Okay, and that is, that is, um, that gives me um, this particular chart, all right? That gives me this particular chart, all right? So the last thing I'll do is, the last thing I'll do is this, guys. I'll bring in the final chart, okay? Sorry about that. I'll bring in the final chart. I'll click on this, Control X, and then I click on the dashboard and paste it here, Control V. I paste it here and again I resize it. Right? I resize the charts to fill in this. Somebody's asking which app are we using? Excel, Excel, so Excel has never looked this strange to you, right? So we are using Excel, okay? We are using Microsoft Excel. The same Excel that you know. So if you look at this sheet, this is Excel. This is still Excel, and this is still Excel. All right. So, I'll quickly um, just turn this, you know, apply the um, format. So I'll click on this, format, shape view, click on no view, right? Um, I just simply click on text view to, you know, um, ensure that the text is in white, okay? Okay, somebody's suggesting another color, all right? So feel free to use the colors that you, that you like, okay? But I'll, I'll just stick to this one for the sake of this session. All right, so now, now that I've done this here, yeah, we are getting somewhere. We just need two more things, two more things, all right? So I'll click on this, I'll click on this um, this title and duplicate it. Why am I duplicating it? It's a very smart move. I want to bring it to this place. I'll reduce it to fit in here, all right? Reduce it to fit in here, okay? Highlight everything I have in there and type in, uh, um, that will be returns, returns, or number of returns. Let me say number of returns, so that it's more explicit. Number of returns, OK? 
Okay, the text is too big. So I'll just highlight it and reduce the font size. Okay, reduce the font size to number of returns, of number of returns, and you have something like this. All right, you reduce the font size. Okay, to reduce the font size, again, you can, you can just highlight it, click on home, you know, and then you use this to reduce the font size. Or, you know, you select an actual size that you, that you use. Now, after I've done this, all I need to do is now to duplicate this one, Control D to duplicate, and drag it here. Okay, and drag it here. All right, and then um, I call this total amount or total quantity rather, total quantity returned, total quantity returned. Total quantity returned, and then um, I duplicate that, and this would be um, this would be monetary value, monetary value, um, or return value. Let me call it return value, return value, return value. So I'll put this here. put this here, all right, return value, okay? So I have this, right? So let me, I'll just put in my slicers and you know, we are, we are done for today, all right? So I'll show you how it updates, right? So I'll click on inserts, I'll click on inserts and click on slicer, I'll click on slicer, okay? Now, if you have, in case if you have this, close it, you'd have to click on a chart first before you click on insert. So click on a chart, click on insert, then click on slicers. That way it's going to bring out the fields for you because you want the fields associated to that chart, right? Now, I want to use my, um, I want to use, I want to bring a slicer for return complaints and another one for um, risk category, okay? I'll select those two and click okay. And then, um, I have these two slicers, okay? And they are meant to filter my data for me. So I can put one here. Um, I'll just reduce the size, put it here, okay? And then I'll reduce the size of this one also and put this one here, all right? I'll put it here. So these are my return complaints, okay? Return complaints. So you right-click on them. You right-click on, the, on, the, on one of the slicers, report connections, and you want to check all the check the box for all the pivots, all the pivots tables that, that you can find there. Click OK. Then you click on this one also. Right click, check the, click on report connections, check the box for all pivot tables you find in there. Sure, all of them are checked. Click on OK. Now, when I click on accidents, okay, the data filters down to accidents. You can see eight total quantity is this. And return value is this, all right? Can we all see what's happening to the chart, guys? Can we see that? If I click on dented, it updates, right? If I click on missing in transit, it updates. But this is not even where we are going. This is not where we are going yet, all right? Let me take you to where we are going. But before we go there, I'll just click on this slicer. I'll click on this slicer, click on slicer, and select, um, I'll select, a matching color for my dashboard. I'll just select a matching color just for the sake of coloring, all right? Now, let us add, let's go to the source data, right? Let's go to the source data. So let me go back to this folder. So this was the source data that we used, that we connected to, right? This was the source data we used. So let's open up the um, update data now. And what I'll do is, what I'll do is I'll copy all this. So I'll just click somewhere. So this is extra data. So we are mimicking a situation whereby, okay, other returns have come in, all right? Yes, you have it, everything. This secondary data is also in the, in the slide, all right? I'll show you again so that you see it. Everything you need to do this thing that I've done today, what I'm doing, you would have it in slide. So Control A to highlight everything, Control C to copy, okay? Control C to copy, and then um, I can minimize this. 
um, I would open up the initial data, open up that initial data, okay? Um, I'll open it up, give it a moment, and then I'll paste, I'll paste what I copied here. You can see this ends at 401. So when you include the header, when you include the header, you now know that, okay, the data is actually 400 rows. And that's how you have 400 returns, right? So I'll, I'll paste this here. So we have um, up to, I think, um, 509. We now have 509 returns. Okay, so all I need to do is just to save. I'll save this, okay, so that it registers. I save it, and then I close it. Okay, save and close. Now that I've saved and I've closed it, all I need to do is I would come back here to this particular dashboard, click on data, click on data. Can we all see refresh all? Can you see the icon for refresh all? Can you see that, guys? We're about to round up, okay? Can you see that? Fantastic. I'll click on the drop down and click on refresh all. Refresh all. Once I click on refresh all, okay? Once I click on refresh all, all right? What happens is, it's refresh it. Let's let's click on it again. Click on that. Click on the drop down. Click on refresh all. Okay. Can we all see what happened? Do you see what happened to the total number of returns, guys? Do you notice what happened to the total number of returns? Did anybody see what happened? Nobody saw what happened. Okay, fantastic. Great. So initially we had 400. You had 400, you had them, um, I think 10,000 something here. Yeah. And then you had, I think, um, 130 something here. Yeah. Everything has, the data has, this has picked the new data, all right? So it increased from 400 to 509 and every other thing also increased, right? So you can then do your final touches, putting your your title here. Um, so the ideal is for us to change our title. This is driver. Um, return per driver, return per driver, okay, return per driver. We have, um, you can suggest titles for me, guys, okay? This is return per logistics partner, logistics partner, right? And then this is um, um, return, 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 I'll just say RTN percentage. RTN percentage per complaints, all right? And, you know, um, that's all, okay? So somebody's asking, why did I merge it? The reason is, what I've tried to mimic here is, you are tracking returns. Returns come in every single day. So imagine that when you were working with the data sets, you had returns, 400 returns when you were employed. So the following day, returns are coming in. All you need to do is to create something like this. And even if returns come in on a daily basis, you can just simply hit refresh. Just come here, click on data, refresh all, and everything, the latest data is captured by the dashboard. Okay, so that's the whole point. So you are able to give accurate analysis at all times, at all times, right? So you can see KC3 clearly here, and you can see the logistics partner, all right? You can see the logistics partner. You can see, um, you know, the return, the return percentage per complaint as well. So if you click on high risk, okay, you see KC3 still, um, KC3 still takes the, takes the mantle there. You can see 237 returns for high risk. If I click on low risk, 272 returns. Accidents, four returns are low risk for accidents, you know, and so on and so forth. So you can you can make your dashboard as interactive as possible. And this is just a snippet, all right? This is a snippet of what you can do with um, Excel. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you guys learned something. All right, fantastic. I can see you have a lot, a lot of, a lot of questions. Somebody is asking why didn't you update in Power Query Editor? All right. So the engine you built, everything has passed through Power Query Editor. Remember that the new data I added 
had the date in that previous date format. If I didn't need to clean anything again, everything goes through that same pipeline and then comes here to the dashboard. That's the whole point. All right. So type in what you've learned. Type in one word. In one word, what did you learn today? In, before I continue with the slides, what did you learn today? If I continue with my slides, what did you learn today? What did you learn today? What did you learn today? If I continue, what have you learned today? Creating a chart, how to create a dashboard. Fantastic. Great. Great. Now, what you've seen me do, right? What you've seen me do in a more ideal session, a session where you know you are you're on ground and you want to learn what I what I've done, just the same way I've I've done now, but in a way that I would walk you through step by step and ensure that you are able to create it right there and then. All right. How how do you how do we how do you get to do that? That's what I'm about to talk about. Okay. So, like I mentioned, the data sets that I used, this is it here. And then the one I used to update it, this is it here. So the I've kept the links here. You can work with this once you get the um once you get the um you know the recording. All right. Now, why should you be a data analyst in the first place? Why should you be a data analyst in the first place? Now, I'll tell you for a fact, one of the benefits I've had being, being a data analyst is that I've gotten the opportunity to work with people who are in control of organizations, captains of industries, CEOs, COOs, and so many others. So you get to have an impact, right, in the change that is to occur. And that's simply because you have the required skills to make sense of data. And that's your job as a data analyst. You are to make sense of data, all right? So a lot of organizations take um, you know, decisions, want to take decisions based on data, all right? So somebody says your opinion is key, your, you make it easier. Yes, but it's not your opinion, actually. It's the data. It's your, your analysis is not your opinion as a data analyst. Your analysis is what the data says, but you possess the skills, all right? You possess the skills to bring out that insight that the data conceals. So and you can do it in so many creative ways. So as a data analyst, all right, um, or one of the things, like I was saying, one of the reasons you want to be a data analyst is because the demand the demand for this role is increasing. I was on a, I was in a session um, last week and I was talking about um, saturation in the data analytics space. A lot of people think that, you know, the space is saturated. Data analysts, I've heard a lot of people are data analysts now. But what you don't know is that as many people are going into data analytics, you have many roles coming up. A lot of recruiters are seeking data analysts all right and a lot of new things are coming into the industry and they are they are begging for people who have the skills that i have just showcased to you today all right now when you look at the world um, economic forum okay and what did one of the things they do is they come up with the future of jobs reports right and these are not just anyhow people these are uh, this is a community of captains of industries, politicians, billionaires that dictate the trajectory of things like jobs, the economy, um, climate, and so many advancements that are even yet to come. So one of the things they do, like I mentioned, is they predict into the future what jobs are likely to be in demand and which are likely to decline. And if you look closely on my screen, You'd see that, sorry, you'd see that the data analyst and scientist is a job role. It's a job role that would be in demand. On the left hand side, all right, the ones that have the blue, um, the blue bar, you can have kept the link here. You can look at the full reports. It's a comprehensive report, not just this page. It's a comprehensive report. You want to take a look at it and see for yourself, right? So, data analysts and data scientists 
were grouped as one of the job roles that would um, be on the rise 2024 or onwards, all right? So it means that you'll be doing yourself so much good going into data, going into data analytics, all right? Especially for this year, okay? So now let's talk about who the data analyst is. Who exactly data analysts? Like I mentioned earlier, your job as a data analyst is to make sense of data, right? You have to make sense of data. So a data set that looks, a data set that looks like this, all right? We saw, we saw all these, we saw this data set earlier, right? We saw this data set earlier. A data set that looks like this, you turn it into something like this, okay? You use your skills to turn it into something like this that is more readable, easily understandable, you know, something you can tell a story about. Are we together? Are we following? Are we following? If you're following, type a one in the chat so I know we are we're on the same page. Are you following? Do you think you want to be being a data analyst, something you want to venture in? You want to venture into it. Yeah, you see somebody says, at first glance, it's easily understandable. And that's your job, all right? You want to make something complex, something that is complex to be easily understood in such a way that you can now, you know, generate insights from the data, right? We can generate insights from the data, okay? Now, how then do you become a data analyst. How do you become a data analyst? All right. So I'll talk briefly about it, and Adesa will come and tell us the rest. Okay. Adesa will show us people who have done it before, you know, and how you can also benefit from our programs. All right. Now, to become a data analyst, like I said, you are in charge of making, um, you know, generating insights from the data. And why are you doing it? You want to help your organization to make data-driven decisions, all right? Because that's how they win. That's how they, they as an organization remain relevant. Else, others who use data will kick them out of the market. That's why you as a data analyst is needed. You are needed in that organization because you have the requisite skills to generate insights from data, right? So what you'll be doing is most of the type of analytics you'll be doing is what we call descriptive and diagnostic analytics. Descriptive and diagnostic analytics. I'm wondering, what was the difference? Very simple. So the descriptive analytics is very similar to what we did today. And that is you summarizing the data, okay? You tell a story using the data, right? So you describe, oh, um, we had 509 returns. Out of the 509 returns, Kesidra appeared to um, be the one with, by, by a very large margin, the most return. And it's so obvious that we need to call Kesidra in for questioning or for, in, for an interview. Because if we are able to reduce Kesidra's um, return drastically, we would have done a lot in terms of recovering many of our, our revenue. Do you understand? And then we can now see how we can you know, solve, use Kesidra's um, issue to also solve um, other returns and we would have made a very huge stride in saving our revenue on the long run. Do you understand? And this is how you bring value to the table as a data analyst. And as a data analyst, in the UK alone, the average salary of a data analyst is about, is over 40,000 um, pounds, all right? In the UK, all right? As a data analyst, if you're working in Canada, you are looking at an average. When I say average, I'm not talking about the highest or the lowest. I'm talking about the average. Okay, so depending on your in your your organization or your region, you know, salary can be higher and it can be lower than this. But it's over around it hovers around this um, particular figure you have. Okay, and you can have a look at um, job sites like Glassdoor, Total Jobs, Read.co.uk to confirm this average. They are all there. Okay, so this is not me coming up with this. I'm not making it up. It's there live in the internet for you to see, right? If you're working as a data analyst in the US, you are looking at over 70,000 US dollars, all right? And what do you need to learn to become a data analyst? 
you 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 need to go through what we call problem solving. A lot of people, you know, skip this and they think that oh, all you need to know is um, Excel, Power, you know, and all those technical bits. But you need to understand problem solving. After understanding what problem solving is, talking about you know all, all the different techniques to solving a problem, like the Chris DM framework, talk about the DMAIC, the um, Pareto principle. You talk up. You also talk about the root cause analysis, SWOT analysis of solving problems. You learn all this framework and see exactly how it's been applied by professionals like myself, like Adesa, who be who be speaking to us very shortly. You would also go on to learn, you know, Excel. Okay, I we just used Excel a um, couple of moments ago. You'd learn Excel for data analytics, all right, and you learn. Practically solving an actual problem, generating insights. Then you get to learn what we call SQL. SQL is what we call structured query language. And it's a very simple query language um, that is used for extracting data from a database. So you get to work with organizations that store their data in what we call a database. So you would have to speak a language so that the database understands so that it can retrieve data from the database. To do that, you'd, you'd use SQL. So you have to learn SQL. And a lot of you mentioned Power BI. You are familiar with Power Query and Power BI. You learn Power BI also for business intelligence. Then you also learn Tableau. So we included Tableau because Tableau is very similar to Power BI in terms of what they do. All right, but recruiters, you know, sometimes would ask for one of the two. So we are giving you both. So that will put you at that pedestal um, that gives you the advantage over your peers. Then you get to learn what we call data storytelling. So you tell a story using data. It's not about building a fancy dashboard alone. There must be a story behind your fancy dashboard, right? And then you'd also get to learn what we call chat GPT for analytics. Chat GPT for analytics, we are moving slowly and steadily into the um, you know, era of AI. So you have to start to learn how to use chat GPT as a data analyst. I know a lot of you, if I ask a lot of you now, you say you've heard of ChatGPT. Some of you have even used it. Right or wrong? Tell me if I'm wrong. Is there anybody who has not heard of ChatGPT at this point? And don't 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 be shy. If you don't if you're not if you've not heard of um, ChatGPT, that's fine. That's why we are. That's why you know platforms like Penalty to exist. Okay, you've heard it. You've used it a lot. So you would come on board. Then I would show you exactly how to use it as a data analyst. The way I use it, I'll show you how to use it as a data analyst. And that'll help you become more productive and also to help you stay ahead in the competition, right? Now, okay, somebody has said I haven't, exactly. So you see exactly how to use it effectively. Now, you'd also um, not use it effectively alone, but use it as a data analyst. That's the, that's the clause there. So you'd also get to learn Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric is a new tool developed by Microsoft. And um, it houses things like, you know, Power BI service, um, tools that cut across, you know, data analytics, data engineering, data science, you know, all in one place. You'd have everything in one place such that as an organization, you as a data analyst can collaborate with um, data engineers, you can collaborate with your CEO, you can collaborate with every team member within the organization in a single platform. And that platform is Microsoft Pad. So you'd see how to use that. It's a new tool. A lot of organizations have not yet started to you know, um, implement this. But when they do, you would be at an advantage because you would have become familiar with this. And you can also use that um, as a selling point for yourself during an interview and say, look, if I come on board, you know, I would add value. Part of the things I've done prior is I worked an organization where I implemented Microsoft Fabric. And that's, you know, fostered collaboration within the team. And you did so and so. You told them the results. And then they will look at you and say, look, this person brings a lot to the table. Let's hire, hire them. All right. And you'll be learning this for four months. You'll be learning this for four months. And a lot of people ask us how we do it. It's very simple. You come to class and you learn from an actual data analyst like myself, like a Deza. Right, and so many other team members within the team, you learn from them experientially. So we'll be sharing our experience and expertise with you for the course of three months. 
okay? And then you get to do a one month growth internship for you to hone your skills, <clears throat> all right? And you do this alongside applying to jobs. I think I'll talk more on that once it comes up, okay? And our classes happen every weekend, okay? Every Saturdays you have your live class like this, in a session like this, all right? For people in the, for people in Europe, the UK, in the European, people in the UK, uh, people in Africa, you'd get to have your class 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Your life class would happen on Saturdays, all right? And it lasts for three hours, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., all right? If you're in the UK, you're in Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, um, in the Europe, you know, you'd get to have your classes 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And for those in North America, okay, you'd have your classes 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Mountain Standard Time. Mountain Standard Time. And that would be equivalent to 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, West African time, right? So we've, we've done the classes in such a way that depending on the region you fall under, if you're in Canada, you're in the U.S., or you're in the U.K., or you're somewhere in Africa, you'd be put in a, a specific class um, um, depending on your region. So you'll be in that class and you get to work with people in, in within the same region, all right? And then on Sundays, you get what we call the self-paced Watch Me Do It videos. And this, this is one of the keys to how we are able to, you know, move you from, from classroom to getting your first job as a data analyst within four months, right? So now, Yes, you can join our Saturday classes, King Vivid. And as I'll talk about how you can join our Saturday classes, right, shortly, all right? So the self-paced Watch Me Do videos that you get on Sundays are bite-sized videos, short videos that, you know, allow you to um, have a feel of what you'd be learning class the following Saturday. So from Sunday and through the week, all right, you'd get to learn, you'd get all these small little short videos that introduce you to some concepts that do not require a life class. Things like, what is Excel? What is a cell in Excel? What is a row in Excel? And some other basic aspects that don't require life classes. And then you can do that you know, um, at your own pace before the class on Saturday. So you come to class on Saturday and you solve an actual real life pro problem using the two, using Excel, using Power BI, using SQL in class with an instructor who works as a data analyst and they'll share their experience with you um, and you solve it together under their guidance, all right? So as a data analyst, okay, when you're, when, when you're searching for jobs, when you're looking for jobs, all the kind of opportunities you're open to are enormous. You can apply to data analyst roles supply chain analyst roles, BI analyst, marketing analyst, sales analyst, logistics analyst, operations analyst, product analyst, all right? And these are the different roles. There are so many more. This is just a few. So many more, okay? And we, we, we let you know all these things to be able to cast your net so wide that you have the best opportunity to get um, a job at the end of the day, all right? Like I said, it's going to be a four months um, learning journey. You'd have three months of project-based life classes, all right? And then um, you would you also have um, what we call capstone projects. And this will, happen, this will happen alongside your life classes. So once you complete Excel, you'd have a project, all right, on Excel, all right? And then you, you, you start your Power BI alongside, and then you, um, you, you know, you get your capstone projects for that as well, and so on and so forth. Then you get to join our one month, you get to join our one month um, virtual internship as well. Okay, I communicated the time for the classes to you earlier, as well as the self paced watch me do it video. So, um, over to you, Adesa. Let's Adesa tell us some of the people who have done this before, who we've successfully moved from classroom to get in their first job, and then, you know, we'll go on from there. So, hi, right, hi Adesa. 
Yes, thank you very much for that, uh, Mohammed, for that wonderful, wonderful session. And I'm sure we've learned one or two things listening to Mohammed. It's always, um, I would say, exciting seeing how far Mohammed has come and also, you know, getting to see the amazing stuff you can do as a data analyst. The most important thing I want us to take out of today's session is it's not as difficult as people make it to seem. All right. Getting into tech, getting into data analytics is not as difficult as it might play out. Now, usually people struggle to transition because there is no structured learning approach. That's number one. Number two, you learn by watching videos, which is not the best way to learn. You also learn by, you know, just trying to replicate the things you see on YouTube. And I'll tell you from experience, being uh, a data analyst for over a decade, that's the worst way you'd ever learn, all right? The best way you want to learn is working on projects, real life projects, so that when you get the job or you get into an interview, it's easy for you to talk about the things you've done before, all right? So I'll share my screen. And if you just give me the next 30 minutes of your time, I'll walk you through how important it is for people who have also joined, just like you joined. They joined like this at some point, all right? They joined a free session, a free masterclass. They decided to take the next step to register for the main program. And eventually today they are doing amazing stuff across the globe. Somebody was asking me in Nigeria, do we have the demand for data analysts? Is it so high? And I'll tell you that there is no better time to get into data analytics than today across the globe. In Nigeria, most especially, you have people who have all, they've all migrated. You have the Japa syndrome, the Japa craze today. Everybody's living, traveling out of the country, going to the, U going to the UK, going to Canada, and so on and so forth. And the very first set of people that will travel are the people that have the skills to compete for the best jobs. So you have a major gap today in different industries, the banking industry, um, the energy sector, different industries, you have a major gap of these talents. And organizations are scrambling today, scampering to get um, these talents into their companies because they've lost these valuable talents to through migration, all right? So let's get into it very quickly. It always seems impossible that, oh, how do I get it done? Is it possible for me to transition into tech? Is it possible for me to become a data analyst? What Mohammed has shown us today, can I do the same? And within the next 20 to 25 minutes, I'll walk you through people that have done the same, all right? In the last few months, um, in January this year, 2024, you have somebody like Zainab. Zainab joined us last year and she completed her training with us. Now, one thing that I feel we can all learn from Zainab is Zainab, had a way of ensuring that every single thing we taught them, every single thing we advised, because you're not just going to go through the technical training. The technical training would not get you the job. What Mohammed has shown us today, the dashboard, creating a dashboard on Excel, that's not enough to get you the job. How do you communicate your findings? How do you structure your CV? Your LinkedIn profile, does it also communicate the persona of somebody who wants to become a data analyst? So these are all the things we're going to work on and ensure that you have all these things in place to position you for success. And Zainab was a model when it comes to following all those tips. And in January this year, Zainab landed a job as a data manager for somebody asking her their jobs in Nigeria. She got the job in Nigeria, all right? And she dedicated you know, herself and ensuring that she documented her learning on LinkedIn. I'll show you her LinkedIn profile so you see exactly what I'm talking about. Biola also joined us last year, joined, was an accountant in Nigeria, joined our data analytics program, and he got a job in the UK uh, with one of the largest financial giants working in the UK as a data analyst. You have Bernard. Bernard was able to secure a scholarship. He joined our data analytics program and we, I wrote a reference, I wrote a recommendation letter for Bernard for him to put his application, put in his application for a scholarship. He got the scholarship 
with his university in Canada. And he also secured a data analyst role with the professor in that university after joining our data analytics program. Same with Ikmat. Ikmat was a stay-at-home mom for over two for over two years. She decided to get back into um, the the global workspace. She came to us, joined our data analytics program. Even while she was still learning, she had you know different offers. She had different interviews, and eventually she was able to land a job with the NHS in the UK on full visa sponsorship. So she had full visa sponsorship in the UK, getting a job with the NHS as a data analyst. You have Tony. Tony got her job one month after joining our data analytics program. Now, why is this instructive? Tony's story is a testament to the fact that the moment you start with us, you don't have to complete the entire four months because guess what? You complete your Excel class one month after joining. So you see all the things Mohammed did today is a fraction of what you learned within the space of one month. Learning that most of the time is enough for you to put out, put out applications and get a job and eventually land that job. And that was what Tony was able to do. One month after joining, we started to push. You guys should go ahead and apply. We had reviewed their CVs, showed them how to tailor CVs to job applications. And Tony got an interview. Mohammed, that is that just walked it through Excel. Mohammed was the one that prepared Tony for her interview. Mohammed also prepared Ikmat for her interview, and they both secured the job. I'm going to play Ikmat's video, and you listen to when Ikmat actually mentioned Mohammed preparing her for her interview. So let's listen to Ikmat. I think it's interesting that we hear that. So when you see somebody like Mohammed doing amazing stuff. He has helped so many people to transition. And Mohammed is going to be one of your trainers, one of your facilitators in the data analytics program. He's going to teach you Excel. He's going to teach you Power BI. He's going to teach you SQL and so on. But let's quickly listen to Ikmat um, and let's um, hear what Ikmat has to say about- Their premium version really take- Okay, so you get to hear when Ikmat also mentioned the fact that Mohammed worked with her to prepare her for her interview okay so sit back relax it's a very short video three minutes video and you get to listen to ikmat but i want you to listen to the fact that mohammed who just walked you through excel helped ikmat to get her job with the nhs on full visa sponsorship which is something that so many people so many nigerians are struggling today to get so let's listen to ikmat whoops all right, I think it's muted. I'm just going to unmute. Hi, everyone. My name is Ikmat, and um, I was with the match court in Tenalytics. And joining Tenalytics has been the best decision so far. You know, for me, someone coming from a background of full housewife, because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years, and then wanting to break into something new wanting to go back into work into the workforce you know wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities so it was a lot and then i'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me better opportunities and then i'm glad i took it and then <clears throat> uh also the advice of do not sell yourself short that if he it's always the it's very very valid because place yourself right you know don't sell yourself short it's a very 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 valid advice you know internalytics they will hold your hands like a child you know through through the models you have to you have the opportunity to go back and study you have the opportunity to go back and practice you have the opportunity to ask questions you know we have people you can always go back to even outside of class class hours it's, it's the most amazing experience so far really and then another thing is the uh, interview prep guys that is another very important thing i did my interview prep with mr muhammad and it's did did you hear that i'm going to rewind it once more i did my interview prep with mr muhammad prep with mr muhammad and it's the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future he knew what was going to be asked and i'm glad that i took 
I wrote down all the things he mentioned, I went back to practice and then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just, they kept on and then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced, I did an Excel test, I did a math test and then they were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely you are going to get some no's and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The no's will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews. And yes, it worked. It really worked for me because I got my first job three months into the program, my first job. I couldn't take up the job because I was still, there was a student and I was only eligible to do to work 20 hours. So I couldn't take up the job. Three months later, I got two jobs with full visa sponsorship. And guys, all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses I got. So yes, the no's will come, but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best best and the best thing that ever happened to me and then yes um and they are the uh, most affordable the most affordable one i've come across so far and that's the very good advantage so yes the analytics for the win all right so i always love to you know share ikmat's story because it's a fantastic one ikmat joined us april 2023 and she completed her program and got this job sometime around October or November, if I'm correct. All right. So that's Ikmat. And you heard when she said, I've had my interview prep with Mr. Mohammed, and everything he said during the interview preparation came out. And those were the questions that were asked during the main interview. You have somebody like Onua Toyin, Toyin, who got a job also with the NHS on full visa sponsorship after completing our data analytics. You have um Tosin. Tosin got a job as a fraud analyst in the UK where he helps organizations to do what? Prevent credit card frauds. So because you have completed a data analytics program doesn't mean the only job you can get is a data analyst role. Tony is a benefits analyst. Tosin is a fraud analyst. Benga got a job as a business data analyst in Poland. And you'd love to listen to Benga's story as well. So I'm going to leave, the links are all here. When you receive the slides, listen to these amazing professionals. And you also get to see how Tenalytics played a role in their, getting the jobs eventually. You have Olu Bemi, who, who works as a solutions analyst currently with one of the largest insurance companies in Canada. He joined our program um, got a job as a business data analyst with the law depot. That was his first job. And then he switched into a new role um, a few months ago, just before the end of 2023. And he's currently on six figures as a solutions analyst after he completed our data analytics program. And there's so many of them, so many fantastic professionals. And I would advise that all these videos are on our YouTube page. Go to our YouTube, go to YouTube, set analytics and listen to the amazing stories of all these professionals who have done it and they did it the same way you are also thinking of doing it. They joined a masterclass like this for free, came into the masterclass, they saw the amazing potential of data analytics, especially with regards to the opportunities in the areas where they currently reside, in the UK, in the US, in Canada, across Africa, in Nigeria, Ghana, and so on and so forth. So why Tenalytics? Why joint analytics? Number one is simple, and that's our track record of success. Over the last four years, we've been able to help over 2,000 people to learn jobs within the tech ecosystem. And this stems from the strategies we've put in place. I've been in tech for, the, for over a decade. I've worked in Nigeria. I've worked across sub-Saharan Africa. I've worked in the UK, worked for companies in the US, and I'm currently in Canada all right, to do the same thing. So all these years of experience, we know what the market demands, what is obtainable, what to say during interviews. And these are the things we bring to bear. And that's what has kept us, made us phenomenal in the achievements of helping people to get jobs. 
Our achievement is phenomenal. All right, that's number one. Secondly, the facilitators, you work with the best in the industry. Mohammed has worked with Alpha Romeo in the US and that was his very first job when he got into tech, all right? Working with Alpha Romeo, one of the largest luxury car manufacturers in the US. And some people have asked, somebody asked me at the beginning, all right, is Mohammed has the same son name, Mohammed Suleiman, Adeza Suleiman. Are you related? Absolutely. Of course we are. Um, Mohammed is a close family member to me. He's like a brother, all right? He's my cousin. And I'll tell you how Mohammed also transitioned, okay? Mohammed came to me a few years ago, completed university. I was talking about, he's an engineer, mechanical engineer, talking about, you know, trying to get a job. And I said, look, this is the surest way you can get a job in the, you know, in, within a very short period. Learn data analytics, get into data analytics, and that's the surest way for you to land a job. He did. He learned Excel. He learned Power BI, SQL, of course, at analytics. That was where he learned. Okay. And the very first job he got was with Alpha Romeo in the US. He was working remotely, earning in dollars and spending in Naira. He was living in Nigeria, earning in dollars with Alpha Romeo, um, working in the supply chain department. Okay, and that was why I thought I said it at the beginning that I was going to talk about how Mohammed also transitioned. And today, Mohammed has not just done very well for himself, he's also doing well, you know, for other people, helping them to transition as well. And I would say there is nothing more amazing than that. So the facilitators, the curriculum, you have chat GPT, AI embedded into the curriculum to ensure that you are positioned ahead of your peers applying to get the same set of jobs that you will be trying to get. It's a blended learning approach. You don't have to learn and come to class every single Saturday, all right? Or every single Saturday and Sunday. Your live classes on Saturdays and on Sundays you have a self-paced watch me do it video. So on Sunday you get a bite-sized video where you watch, understand the concept. And these are concepts that you can watch and understand on your own. And then on Saturday, you have somebody like Mohammed, you have somebody like myself and other industry professionals that will work on projects with you, work on case studies and help you solve key problems. And of course, how do you get a job after you've learned the technical? This is also what makes Tenalytics fantastic. The sessions we have put in place to help you land the job. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. And how do we put you in that position to ensure that when you apply to jobs, you get the best possible outcome? Number one is your CV. We help you review your CV. We show you how to tailor your CV to job descriptions. We show you how to go above the ATS system. All right, the ATS is simply the applicant's tracking system. So you want to become a data analyst and you're applying to jobs and you're using one CV to apply to 100 jobs, you're never going to get that job. How do you tailor your CV to the job description and get the best possible results? And those are the things we help you with. We help you with your LinkedIn optimization, optimize your LinkedIn profile so that organizations can start to poach you they can start to reach out to you for interviews and so on and so forth. Upwork optimization. This is where you get to work as a freelancer on different projects with different organizations. Navigating the job market. How do you know where to apply to jobs? If you are in Canada, if you are in the UK, if you are in the US, if you are in Nigeria, where do you apply to jobs? How do you ensure that you get the best possible results when you start to put out those applications, especially with regards to the nuances of that particular region? And these are the things we bring to bear. Every week, you have sessions on navigating the job market sessions. You have interview preparation. You listen to Ikmat when she talked about Mohammed preparing her for interview. Okay, so you have an interview. We will prepare you because you have a 50% 50, 50 chance of getting the job when you have an interview. Now, with analytics, we increase that chance to 90%, all right? Because most of the questions you'll be asked based on the job description, all we need to do is look at the job description. And we tell you that this is what you need to prepare for. So your success rate is a lot higher 
than anybody else trying to apply to that job that doesn't have the same help that you will be getting from Tenalytics. We write recommendation and reference letters because these organizations, once they have given you an offer, the next thing they would ask you for is, we want three references or give, you, give us a reference. Show us somebody that we can ask questions about you, that can vouch for you. And Tenalytics is there for you all the way to provide that reference. And that's level one. Now, level two is the weekly mentorship sessions that happens every Thursdays, all right? So you have myself, you have the co-founder of Tenalytics and other industry experts that will work with you to show you what you need to do. You have the opportunity to ask questions. Last week, for example, the mentorship session was on mock interview. And if we have enough time, I'll play a snippet of the mock interview for you. And this is a session where we create a dummy job and we get people to work on their CV and apply to those jobs. Now, the best CVs are selected for interviews. And in that mock interviews, I ask questions. Mohammed asks questions. Other industry professionals would ask you questions. And you answer those questions in a way that you will answer them when you have an actual interview. And we give you feedback. And other people also listening in can also, you know, would learn from that particular um events and learn how to respond to questions during interviews. And when you eventually get the job, sometimes you'd find yourself in a situation where you're on a project that seems a bit more difficult than you anticipated, but you know that you have analytics right behind you to keep on pushing you and ensure that you get all those things resolved. So we provide on the job support for you for one month after you've gotten the job to help you have that solid footing on the job and help you keep the job, all right? The last level, which is level three, which is something we started to do January this year, 2024, is our promise to you. After all the things we've done on level one and level two, it's a guaranteed interview. We are promising you a guaranteed interview one month after completing your training with us. All right. So one month after completing your training with us, it's a guaranteed interview, irrespective of your location, the type of job you want to get, and so on and so forth. And this stems from, number one, the confidence in all the things from your CV to your LinkedIn, how to navigate the job market, and how to put in applications. All right. It's a guaranteed interview. You're going to get an interview one month after joining and completing the program. And we also have initiatives that we are launching. We launched in January 2024, starting this year. And that's the body mentorship. So for people that have gotten jobs like Ikmat, Ramat, people like Toyin, Tosin, Olubemi, we brought them back as bodies. So they serve as your mentors, all right? So you're not listening to Adesa all the time because you might feel that, oh, Adesa is so highly experienced. He's been doing it for 10 years. But you start to listen to people, your contemporaries that have just done it a few months ago. A few months ago, they were in your shoes, but today they've been able to get jobs. So you have that opportunity to ask them questions. What exactly were you asked during your interviews? How do you expect me to do this? What is your opinion about something like this? So you have your body mentorship, you have access to them to set up meetings and so on and so forth. We also have enhanced internship experience. For the data analytics, for example, you would not work alone during your internship. It's a cross-functional team you'll be working with during the internship. So you have the data scientist, you'd have the data engineer, and you work together during your internship, where you'll be working on real-world projects to add to your portfolio. And we also have partnerships with recruitment agencies. So when we give a promise of an interview one month after you complete the program, this stems not just from the fact that we'll, all the work that needs to be done, we are very confident in that. We also have partnerships with recruitment agencies in the UK, in Canada, in the US, and in Africa, in Nigeria to be more specific. And these um, partnerships are meant to do what? Bring the jobs closer to the Tenalytics participants. 
So we have a pool. The moment you complete your program, you've joined the Tenalytics pool of talents. And these agencies, when they require or they request for data analysts, we go into the pool, we provide them with your CVs, and they are able to call you up for interviews and the best person gets the job eventually. All right, so these are the things we put in place to ensure that you are able to get a job as fast as possible, which is the focus for us um, at Analytics. And our next cohort starts on the 2nd of March, 2024, all right? The next cohort starts on the 2nd of March, 2024. And how do you get into the data analytics program for these cohorts? We had a cohort in January that started on the 6th of January. We had a cohort that commenced this February on the 3rd of February, but the, the March cohorts would commence on the 2nd of March, 2024, right? And we have an amazing discount for you guys, the people that will be interested in joining, all right? And the amazing discount is only for the first 20 people that will be joining us from this masterclass. The first 20 people will have access to the discount. And what's the discount? The full amount, if you want to have access to all the Tenalytics materials and support and training is $750. However, we have a $150 discount right off the bat. So rather than paying $750, you get to pay $600 to be a part of the program. And by taking advantage of the discount, you also have the opportunity to make your payments in two installments of $450 and $150 one month after the program must have commenced. And for those who will be paying in pounds, it's £625, which is the full amount, but you then have another amazing discount of $125 where you get to pay just £500 and broken also into two installments of £375 and £125 one month after the program must have commenced. So how do you take advantage of these discounts available uh, to join the March cohort starting on the 2nd of March? All you have to do for those who would love to take advantage of the discounts is to simply, simply click on this link and I'll show you how to access the enrollment page. Remember, the discount is not available for everybody. And that's one mistake people make whenever we have discounts running like this. Typically what happens is by, by, by Tuesday, Wednesday, all the discounted slots are gone, all right? And people come back later to say, oh, I want the discount. But unfortunately the discount is gone, all right? So January is gone, February is almost gone. We are moving into the March cohorts, correct? For those of you that would like to be a part of the Tenalytics program, gets your journey into data analytics started, this is the best place for you to start, to take advantage of the discount and get into the program. All you need to do is click on this link, which my colleagues would share in the chat and they would also share um, at the end of today's session. In your emails, you receive all the details, all right? Once you click on the link, it takes you into the Tenalytics Enrollment Center. And here you have access to the brochures, the program brochures. So if I click on this link, it takes me to where I have the brochures. And if I go to the data analytics, you'd see all the, the different um, aspects of the program, all right? The nitty gritty of what you'll be learning, okay? And let's move just a little bit. So the, for the problem solving, you'd see all the different problem solving techniques that you would learn, how to define problem statements, the Chris DM framework, the five whys for root cause analysis, and so on and so forth. What are you going to learn in Excel? You start with introduction to Excel, the Excel environment, um, understanding the basic Excel functions, and that's how you learn. So you have access to all the nitty gritty. And I'll simply just quickly move to your facilitators. Who are the people that will teach you? And of course, you can see the type of projects you're going to work on, amazing projects. The program is project-based. And this is what separates you from others when you get when you go for interviews, because you'll be speaking from a point of solving problems for, for companies and not just from somebody who has watched videos 
like most people typically do. And it's easy for recruiters. It's easy for hiring managers to see that this person has a very shallow knowledge in data analytics compared to the person talking about how they have used Excel to solve a problem rather than using Excel as a tool, all right? So let's go to the facilitators where you see the people that will be training you and working with you. So you have amazing facilitators. I'll be one of your facilitators and that's me over there. You have Efemena who is the co-founder of Tenalytics. Efemena is a fantastic professional, also one of the facilitators. You have Oluk Bemi who um, is a business data analyst, also one of your facilitators. You have Ola Dapo. Ola Dapo is a senior consultant with Deloitte in Bermuda. Ola Dapo is also going to be one of your facilitators. And you also have Mohammed, who is going to be one of your facilitators as well. And you have Shukurat, amazing, amazing professionals who have done amazing stuff within the tech ecosystem. So you have access to this brochure, and this gives you details, specifics about the program itself. Now you want to make payments to be a part of the program. All you have to do is scroll down here and you'll see the data analytics program, all right? Just click on this and it takes you into the place where you get to make payments. Of course, it doesn't matter the currency you want to pay in. If you are in Nigeria, if you are in Germany, you are in Poland, you would see the currency that fits in that fits into your specific region. All right. So if you're in Nigeria, for example, you can make your payments in Naira. Okay. Now for the data analytics, the program fee is 500 pounds if I'm paying in pounds. Okay. However, I can make an initial payment of what? 375 pounds. That's the initial first payment I can make. Now, because the program is also going to start in about two weeks, it's not starting this weekend or next weekend, you can secure your discounted slots by making an initial minimum amount. So you want to secure your discount today, and perhaps you don't have 375 pounds, there is a minimum you can pay of 250 pounds, all right? I have the minimum, or I have 300 pounds. All I need to do is to simply come in here, and I type in 300 pounds and I click on reserve a seat. So by doing this, I can secure the discount. And before the program starts on the 2nd of March, I get to complete that first installment payment to be a part of the program. So I come in here, I enter my name, Adesa Suleiman. Enter my name, Adesa Suleiman. Enter my phone, my email, enter my phone number and I click on pay with card, all right? So here I can enter my details and so on. And once I enter my card details, your credit card or your debit card, you and you complete your payments, you will receive an email, automated email, based on the email you have provided. We also advise that you use your uh, WhatsApp number so that it is easy for us to reach out to you if we need to reach out to you, all right? So you receive an automated email, you get a receipt into your email and a link for you to enter your details to complete the registration. So once you've made payment, all you do is you receive a link. The link is also here in the enrollment center and I'll show you what the link looks like. So that's the link that says upload your receipts. You'd also receive this link into your email after you've completed payments. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just going to use a different um, I'll use a different browser that where I will not have to enter any password. All right, so I'm just simply going to come here, and I want to show you what the form looks like. So for those of you that are filling the form, what you should expect once you've made payments, you'd receive that link. Okay, oh, the, the link takes you to this particular form and all you have to do is to enter your details, your email, the type of payment you've made, if it's a full payment, initial and so on. So let's call it a full payment, click on next. And then all you need to do is enter your details, your first name, your last name and so on and so forth. Once you complete this form, you are right into the program. Now you will receive a welcome kit once we have confirmed your payment. The welcome kit contains 
every single application that you need for the program, how to download and install Microsoft Excel, how to download and install Power BI, Tableau, SQL, and you also have your timetable or your lesson plan in the welcome kits. You'll receive that ahead of the class starting on the 2nd of March, okay? I'd love to take your questions, so I want you to keep the questions um, coming in. Somebody saying switch your camera. Is my camera off? No, I think my camera is on, all right? So this is what it takes for you to be a part of the program with us at 10 Analytics. Remember, the discount is for the first 20 people to be a part of the program. So, so many of you, and I'm telling you this from experience, okay? As at last year, 2023, um, from January to December, I was in the UK, all right? And I interacted with so many people. And one of the things I noticed among the African community is, Every African, every Nigerian wants to do the care job. They want to work in care because they believe that the care jobs or the care work will give them the sponsorship. Unfortunately, it's so tedious from what I gathered from people doing, it's a very physical you know, job to do. And it's also very difficult for you to progress in your career when you have to do that. With all due respect to people that are doing care, but what I always advised people, and so many of them did it, and the people that took the advice were able to transition and get jobs as data analysts, as data scientists, after completing our programs. Rather than focusing on something that has a very short career um, you know, progression trend, why not learn a skill that help you compete for these jobs? In the UK, for example, you get it, you can easily get a sponsorship as a data analyst. All the organization needs to do, you need to ensure that you are applying to a company that has a license to sponsor, meaning that they can give you a COS, a certificate of sponsorship. And these are the things we'll show you during your navigating the job market sessions. All right. How do you get a certificate of sponsorship? How do you know the companies? that have the license? How do you apply to a job that you're likely going to get a sponsorship from there? And that's why you see a whole lot of our participants getting jobs with the NHS. The NHS is in, in the healthcare, the healthcare sector, in the health sector. However, our participants are not getting jobs as nurses or doctors. They're getting jobs as data analysts, business analysts, data scientists, with the NHS, and that's simply because the NHS is a guaranteed organization that will give you sponsorship once you get to work with them, all right? So these are the things we would open you up to, the opportunities that are available within the space, all right? So rather than doing the menial jobs, and there are so many other testimonials, rather than doing the menial jobs, you're able to get a job to compete for the best jobs, in your respective region, all right? So once you receive the slide, ensure that you, Ramat also works with the NHS, but as a business analyst, um, also on full visa sponsorship in the UK after completing our program in business analysis. And so many of them, so many of them, Abigail is in Canada. Abigail was a care worker in Canada, she joined our business analysis program. And today she works as a business analyst with the government of Alberta, in Edmonton, Canada, all right? And so many of them. Shade is a data scientist in the UK. Um, Nathaniel was a data engineer in Spain. And you have Tammy, who was a lawyer, who is currently a business analyst. You have Michael, who is also in the UK, transitioned to data engineering and currently works for an organization on sponsorship. You have Idris. Idris joined us got a job as a data engineer with Jaguar Land Rover. Most of you know Jaguar, you know Land Rover, the company. You all want to drive Land Rover. Some of you have the range, the Range Rover. Idris works with the company Jaguar Land Rover as a data engineer after completing our data engineering program. Now he moved from this role with, the, with Jaguar Land Rover to a senior analytics engineering role, also in the UK. And we provided references we ensured that he was able to get the job and kept, he kept the job 
and so many other fantastic professionals. And like I said, ensure that you go through all their details. But remember, take advantage of the discounts to get your journey started. Ibu Bay also got a job with the NHS in the UK. Like I talked about the NHS giving sponsorship, which is the focus for a whole lot of immigrants, um, Nigerians, Africans that move to the UK, to Canada and so on, all right? And so many professionals across. So once you receive the slide, do ensure that you click on those links and listen to the transition story of these amazing, amazing professionals. Before we call it a day, I'll walk you through the platform. Okay, so when you join our program, how do you learn? I'll walk you through the platform very quickly in the next five minutes, and then we wrap it up for today. And if you ever want to reach out to us, you can send us an email at inquiries at analytics.io, or you can shoot a message to us on WhatsApp on any of these numbers. All you need to do is just to take a screenshot and you have access to us. You send us a message on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, somebody will respond to you if you have any questions at all. So what I'll do very quickly before we call it a day, I'll walk you through the platform. When you register with us, how do you ensure that you get the best value? I want to pay in Naira. Why am I seeing card? So Gloria, where are you? Where are you located? That's the question. Where are you currently? Are you in Nigeria? If you are in Nigeria, you should see the Naira, not the Canadian dollars. If you are in car, if you are in Canada, then perhaps that's the reason why you are seeing card. Okay, so where are you, Gloria? I would like to know where you are. Okay, so while Gloria is trying to sort that out, I'll quickly show you the platform that you will be learning through when you join Tenalytics. Okay. So let's go to the classroom, the class that commenced, the class that commenced in January. Okay, so you see the stuff they've been doing. So you see the data analytics, you have the cohorts, you have the classes for the North American region. If you're in Canada, if you're in the US, you have a class that fits your time zone. So you're not joining classes at odd hours. If you're in the, U if you're in the UK, you are in Europe, you are somewhere around Africa with similar time zones, you also have your class as well. So that's why you see the data analytics EU and the data analytics NA for North America. But let's go to the January cohorts. For those that started in January, let's see what they've done so far at, because they've done a whole lot uh, within a very short period. So let's go to the data analytics. I think I've gone past it. Data analytics, January cohorts, and there you go. All right. So I'll walk you through the platform very quickly. When you join and you get to be a part of the program. Now, one of the things that you'd find very important that we hold very dear and is also very important to you are these important materials. You have something we call the job material, the links to job websites and also how you, you position and you couch your profile on LinkedIn. Okay, so you have the data analyst uh, profile, the way you couch it on LinkedIn, this is for people that have joined and are part of the program, all right? So you have the role and the way you are expected to highlight your experience as a data analyst. And then you have the links to the job websites where you would apply to jobs and get the best possible outcome. You have your CV templates. After you've done your review, What's the best CV template for you to use? We use the Watson CV format at Analytics, and that's the format that gets you the best results across different regions. It doesn't matter if you're in the UK, you are in Canada, the Watson CV format gets you the best possible results, okay? You also have the link to do what? To book an interview. So you have an interview coming up. You don't need to scamper around, you know, to find out what to do. All you need to do is come in here, click on the link. It takes you to a Calendly, and then you can select the date and time that is most appropriate for you, and you get to book your interview, all right? You also have the job application tracker, and these are very important stuff for you because you have to track 
your job application? How have you been applying to jobs? Are you doing as, as well as you should or are you not doing and so on and so forth, okay? But let's go to the very first class. So these guys have done a whole lot, but let's go to the very first class, okay? So you have your onboarding session when you register and you're a part of the program and then you move into your very first class, problem solving. Now going to the class slide, you have your slides, you have the class recording. So if you ever miss a class, you have the class recording. All you have to do is come back here and you watch the video as a reference. You can see Muhammad in this class teaching the problem solving techniques. Now, if I click on the class recording, it brings up whatever was done in class on that day. I would also have access to that. So you can see Muhammad, he walks them through um, the problem solving class. All you need to do is to play and then you have access to everything that happened in class, all right? I'm not going to bore you with all of this. We go back to the classroom. So if you miss a class, perhaps you had an emergency on a Saturday or you had other commitments, all you need to do is come back to the, to the classroom, watch the recording. You have the slides that was used. You go through the slides and you have access to everything that was done. Now, where you start your journey from is what? What is? data. So it doesn't matter if you've been a data analyst before or you are starting from scratch. It is beginner friendly. You don't dive into Excel like we dived today. Mohammed needed to show you what Excel could do, the capabilities of Excel. But in a typical class, becoming a data analyst, you must understand the foundations, the rudiments of data analytics. So you start from what is data, okay? The types of data, what is data analytics and the different types of data analytics and so on and so forth. And that's how your class would go on and commence until you complete the problem solving and then you move into your very first Excel Watch Me Do It. So you have problem solving on Saturday, on Sunday, you have your Watch Me Do It video, all right? So it's not a live class, it's a self-paced class. So you come in here and you watch your videos, you have your slides, you have your data sets and you watch those videos. And the following, still on that same week, you have your mentorship session. So the mentorship sessions happen every single week, week in, week out. Sometimes you might you know, not be able to join because you have other commitments, but the beauty of a platform like this, you have the recording, you always come back to the recording. Okay, now your very first Excel live class. And let me show you what we mean by project-based learning, all right? Your very first Excel class. Now, remember, before you come into this class on, on a Saturday, you would have watched your Excel Watch Me Do It videos for on, that, on the previous Sunday. So you come into class working on a project or case study. And let's look at the case study for this very first class your very first live class on Excel. And this is where you learn by solving problems. You are not learning Excel as a tool. We are learning Excel as a tool to help to solve problems for organizations. So the very first case, you look at a case where you've been hired as a data analyst for a vehicle dealership in North London in the UK, and you've been given a data set of 56 different brands. So your role is to help this organization to address certain issues that they have using Excel as a tool. So you're going to use the named range, all right? And you're also going to use different other functions that you'd have learned to solve this problem. You have a second case, you have a third case, and these are the cases you'll be solving, all right? This is for the very first Excel class. And the reason why you have to learn this way is so that you learn from the mindset of solving problems, not from the mindset of knowing how to use Excel. Anybody can learn how to use Excel, but not everybody would know how to solve a problem using Excel when they eventually see that problem. One last thing I'll talk about before I move out of here and take, out, take your questions is the drop-in session. Now, because you guys are new to the world of tech, you are new to data analytics. There are certain things you might find a little bit challenging, 
okay? And this is where watching videos online, you don't get this type of benefits because when you find something challenging, there is nobody to ask questions, all right? So you have something we call the drop-in sessions. And these drop-in sessions happen during the week where you have watched your videos, you've been in class during the weekend, but there is something you've been trying to do and you're not getting it right, all right? During the drop-in session, somebody would join a, a class with you during the week at your convenience in the evening, join a class with you and help you solve that particular problem. So we are, what is the issue? What problem are you facing? Can I have a look? So you can share your screen and that data coach or the data associates would look at the problem that you have and tell you exactly what to do. So you don't take a problem from a previous class into a new class. And that's the beauty of the drop-in sessions. Okay, so you have your mentorship sessions, your second Excel live class, which of course, you also get to work on another project. It is always project-based, always. And this particular project is a supply chain analysis case study. And this particular case study is a real life case study. Remember, Mohammed has worked in supply chain for Nestle, worked in supply chain for Alfa Romeo in the US. All this experience and the projects and case studies, we create a project out of it. Of course, we change the data so that you cannot directly relate the data to any company. But what you are doing essentially is you are experiencing the same type of project that Mohammed has worked on while he worked as a data analyst. You'd experience exactly the same type of project that I would have worked on while I worked as a data analyst over the space of 10 years. So you would also be getting experience and that is what gives you the edge over anybody else. So you look at the case overview and you look at this particular task and you are able to solve the task using Excel. Okay, so that's the case study approach when we talk about case study approach. So you have the first body mentorship session. I talked about the body mentorship where you have alumni who have gotten jobs, they come back to mentor you, all right? So you have the first body mentorship that happened in January. You have your Excel Live class three, and this is where you start to apply to jobs. Once you are done with Excel, you have your Excel capstone. So the moment you are done with Excel, you have a capstone project. Once you are done with Power BI, you have a Power BI capstone project, okay? So this is the fantastic platform that contains, and you have lifetime access to this. So you can always come back, have access to the material, have access to the content, and they're all here for you, all right? So what I'm going to do now is to take questions and we wrap up the session in the next about 10 to 12 minutes. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat. So I'll just go through the chat very quickly to see if there are questions in there. Shagun says, I currently work as a business analyst at a bank in Nigeria. I want to enroll for data analytics. Can that make me? Absolutely, absolutely. That can make you a business data analyst. The difference between the business analyst and the business data analyst is the a business analyst that has data analytics skills would be called a business data analyst, all right? So a business analyst with data analytics skills would get a job as a business data analyst. In fact, there is a gentleman who actually has I would love to tell his story, but we don't have time. But just to summarize, he was out of work for about six months in the UK. He worked as a business analyst for the last five years, but he couldn't get a job. I looked at his, I looked at his CV and I saw that he had nothing data analytics on it. All I needed to do was tell him, Olamide, join um, our program, learn data analytics, add that to your business analysis skills. And that would open up a whole lot of doors for you. He did that. He joined our program in July, 2023. He completed his program in um, around October and he got his job in November, 
last year. He currently works as a business data analyst for a company called U Energy in the UK. U Energy. All right. As a business data analyst. So that's I believe that answers your question, um, Shegun. So adding data analytics to your business analysis skills would get you a job any day, anytime as a business data analyst. All right. Um, let's see more questions. So Gloria, you're in Canada, so you can't pay in Naira. All right. If you're in Canada, you get to pay in card, and that's why you are seeing card. So the currency is based on your location. All right. The currency is based on your location. Um, King is in Ghana. King, the same thing. All you have to do, you can pay in any currency, King. All you have to do is you can pay in Naira, you can pay in card, uh, you can pay in dollars. Most likely you're going to see the dollar option, um, King Vivid. Um, if you don't have money, one can't start the cost. Just, uh, I'm not sure what your question is, King. Um, you can't join the program without making payments. If that's the question you're asking, the answer is yes. You need to definitely uh, make payments to be a part of the program. Um, somebody's asking in, as a, in a direct message, what about someone like me um, that started with the February cohort? Could you please apply this discount for us too to pay 600K? as well there's no 600k here kemi it's 600 dollars of 500 pounds okay so it's 600 dollars if you've paid if you've joined already this discount is for the march courts um i i believe we had a discount for february if i'm correct kemi and i'm sure if you had joined in february you probably um, should have taken advantage of that discount um yeah but you can just you can send me send an email to i'm sending you a direct message but I, like i said i believe you would have taken advantage of that already okay but i just dropped an email for you kenny nene send an email to nene and she can work something out for you depending on um you know what you want let me see very quickly more questions in the chat uh okay if you have any other questions, please feel free to send them in and I'll be very, very happy to take your questions. All right, so Kim Kim is saying, my question is at the moment, I don't have finances, but I would love to study the course and then pay within four months. Is that possible? So Kim Kim, the, the most important thing you need to do now is to secure the discounted slots because it's easier for you to pay the discount, the discounted fee than to pay the full amount. So secure the discounted slots. That's the first thing. Secondly, what you need to do is if you want to make payments in four installments, send an email to Nene. I'm going to drop Nene's email in the chat. Just send an email to Nene. All right. And should engage you, maybe probably put a phone call through to you. And once you've agreed, she can make you know such arrangements for you, all right? Or send an email to Nene and she will be able to make arrangements for you in that regard. All right, so welcome, Kim. Um, let me see. Will data science program entail generative AI? Absolutely. That the, the major difference between um, the data analytics and data science is predictive analytics. Okay, predictive analytics. So the generative AI you learn is chat GPT, just like the data analyst would also learn chat GPT for analytics. All right, you're not, you're not going to learn how to build the generative AI model. That's beyond predictive analytics. That's a large language model. And it's a very it's a complex thing that you know would take a whole lot of time eventually, but you would learn prompt engineering using chat GPT for data analytics, if you had a data analytics program or chat GPT prompt engineering for data science, the importance of understanding how to use chat GPT, I can't overemphasize how important it is today. If you are a data analyst and you understand prompt engineering using chat GPT, 
you would be way ahead of your peers, way ahead, because everything you need to do would be, be would become very easy. You become more efficient, all right? So, you know, far more efficient than your contemporaries. You'll be doing things in the office and people would wonder, how are you coming up with these insights? How are you solving these problems? But they won't know that you have the supports of Chat GPT helping you do that, all right? I would also show you how to um, address the issue of data privacy because most organizations are also concerned about their data being on, you know, um, platforms like Chat GPT and so on. But there are ways around data privacy. And these are the things we'll teach you when you join the program and you are learning Chat GPT for data analytics or data science. Ezekiel is asking, can I make an initial payment of 150 um, then pay up before the program starts? Um, unfortunately, Ezekiel, you can't pay 150. The minimum you can pay, the minimum you can pay using the link is $250. $250. Dollars or thereabout, not 150. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Shall we say, Miss Nana, please drop your email for us to contact you. So, those that are contacting Nene are the only people, like somebody like Kim, that asked, Oh, can I have X payment plan? Can I have this? Can I have, you know, and so on. Uh, we don't give that concession to everybody, all right? Just to people that, and you have to go through a process before that gets approved anyways. Um, how do I make payments with the link? Udoka is asking. So Udoka, all you have to do, I think my colleagues shared the link earlier. So if you can share the link again, Elijah, please share the link, all right? Share the link, Elijah. Um but I'm just going to drop Nene's email for you, Shedden, since you've asked that already. Okay. Since you've asked that already, I'm just going to drop the email. So just send an email. You were in Adesa's masterclass. And this is what you would like to have. And of course, if she approves that, we get you into the program. All right. I'm not sure we have more questions. So as I wrap up today, what I want you guys to do, I want you to do two things, very important, and do it this week. The first thing you need to do, you need to do that one today, all right? Follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, so you get amazing content that would come from us regularly. It's very important because we dish out free stuff every other day. So a lot of content, if you go to our YouTube, for example, we had a session today on how to build uh, a forecasting model, all right? How to build a predictive model, how to get started with Python. We've had multiple sessions that you get to learn for free, okay? So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram so you get more amazing updates on sessions that we will be having um, you know, across the tech ecosystem. Follow us on LinkedIn as well to see the amazing work we are doing. The second thing I want you to do is share this message to people you think would benefit from it. All right. You have a brother, you have a family member, you have a colleague in the office, share the message with them. Once you receive the recording, you receive the slides, share the message. And finally, what's Mohammed has shown, shown you how to do today? The dashboard he built before the end of the week, try to build your own Okay, you have access to the data sets. It's, it's embedded on the slides for you. Watch the recording and try to do the same thing using Excel. And I bet you, knowing how to do that alone would have taken your skills from ground zero to this level, All right? And as I close, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has been a part of the session today. Um, for spending your Sunday evening. If you are somewhere in the UK or in Nigeria or Europe, I'm sure it's pretty late now. Um, if you're in Canada, it's about 3 p.m., um, depending on your region. If you're in Alberta, it's 3 p.m. That's where I am. If you're somewhere in um, Ontario or Vancouver, it's around 
um, 5 p.m., if I'm correct. Okay. And for all of you across the globe joining us, I want to say a big thank you for being a part of our weekend. And I hope you've learned one or two things today. All right. By joining our session. So share the message with other people that you think would benefit from this until we meet again in another session. And I would say that, take advantage of the discount, be a part of the first 20 so that you get your journey started. As a company, you would include commission-based referrals. Absolutely. Kim, we have, we have a referral scheme, okay? We have a referral scheme. As you're sending your email to Nene, just add that there. Oh, I have somebody I want to refer. And she will also... Um, you know, chip that in for you. I have a brother who I'm not sure would like this, but he's in Australia. Udoka, we have participants across the, the globe. We've had people get jobs in Qatar. We've had people get jobs in Jamaica who are Africans living in those regions. We recently had somebody who joined us from um, New Zealand, and I think that was the first for us from that region. So it doesn't matter where um, your brother is, share the message with him. And if he's interested, we'd love to work with him to help him get his journey started as well. Okay. So once more, thank you very much, guys. You get the recording in your emails. As long as you're in our WhatsApp group, you are, you received an email from us or you filled the attendance form from today's session, you will get the recording. It would also be uploaded to our YouTube channel, and that's why it's important for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, okay? So thank you very much, guys, for joining um, once more. And Mohammed, any last words before we wrap up? Yeah, so I just want yeah. to add to, add to just a bit of what you said. So take advantage of the discounts currently running. Like Abeza said, a lot of people come back you always come back one thing month out to say, is the discount still available? Um, I'm ready to pay, All right? So there, there's a lot in store, okay? We'll be sharing our experience with you, our expertise with you, and some tips and tricks that you need to, to know to get ahead, All right? So do well to join us. I'll be happy to have you guys on board. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Have a productive week ahead.